Hey, hey, everybody. Oh. Hey, Flossie. Thank you for the 15 month resub. Good morning, Elkhart. Gary, how you doing? <laughs> Mr. Pyro Ninja. <laughs> and yes, Elcor, I was at a game con all this last weekend. It was a lot of fun. My son was there with me. Just resubscribed for 15 months. Thank you for that 15 month resub there, buddy. I appreciate that. Very, very much. Yes, I was at Game Con uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, I streamed a little on Thursday, but Thursday afternoon, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then on Sunday, we also had my brother's birthday party. Uh, and then yesterday was my brother's birthday as well. So very busy weekend. <laughs> very, very busy weekend. But the Game Con was amazing. And then on Saturday evening, um, a guy that I worked with about, oh, 35 years ago, at least like 35 years ago, he contacted me because he, cause he saw my, uh, he saw my Instagram posts and he, uh, he came down to the con. So that was kind of cool. And, uh, we just chatted for a while, caught up and, and, uh, that was, it was, it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> it was a good time. Good morning, dudes. How are you doing today? I think I may have got a little bit of a, you know, convention crud. You know how it goes at conventions. You're you're exposed to a lot of things. It's I think more than for me than anything, it was the air conditioning at the convention. Because they always have that air conditioning going inside. And I think that kind of got me. <clears throat> Hey, I know you're, uh, I, you know, playing Robots and Stellaris is a night, uh, night and day game. I, I haven't had this much fun forever. Thanks for tips. Oh yeah, Gary. The robots, uh, the playing the robots, Gary, really gives you a chance to get some of the other game mechanics figured out beforehand. So, bad boy gamer with a member for two months. At the Wolfpack level saying, still sick for three weeks, going on four weeks and two days. Oh, God, bad boy gamer. Dude, you've been fighting that forever. Forever. Hey, Chris Frederick. Hello, hello. Ari, how you doing? Yeah, I had a great time, Chris. Um, I'm glad to be back, though, too. I, I've, I've missed it. I've missed all you guys, and I've missed, you know, streaming and having fun. We got Long Dark and Nightingale today. Um, we got... Um, uh, Long Dark and um, and uh, State of Decay 2 this next, this Thursday. And we're going to do Long Dark and um, Horizon Forbidden West on Friday. Long Dark Medieval Dynasty Saturday. And then Long Dark and we're returning finally to Escape the Pacific on Sunday. So we got a full full week left of gaming to do. Uh, we I, you know, I'll be taking tomorrow off because tomorrow I, I need to get some recording for Witcher 3 done. I got got a few other things I need to do as well. So tomorrow I'll be off, but yeah, we'll be uh be uh, streaming today and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday like usual. So uh, excited to be back. Hi, Anora, Laka. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Welcome on in. But uh, yeah, thank you everybody for for you know checking out you know checking out the Instagram this weekend. I put a lot of pictures up there of uh of the gaming convention. We actually on. Friday, right in the middle, we got there at about 10, we got there about 9.30 on Friday, started playing a game, at about 10.30, the lights went out, the, uh, I, it's, uh, the gaming place was on a place called Hayden Island, and the, the lights went out, and all of Hayden Island lost power till like 2 in the afternoon, so we were playing games in the dark for a while, <laughs> you found out you have the rhino virus, bad boy, oh man. Yeah, be careful. Oh, God, that's horrible, man. Take care of yourself, buddy. That's rough. Alex Speed, how you doing? How's it going? Good to see you as well here on the Twitch side. Good to see you, buddy. Well, today, boys and girls, we're going to be getting back into our long dark. We're going to be getting back into the long dark. Um, we're at day 497, so we're almost to 500 days. We're in a cave outside. Hey, XMS. XM, maybe XM Slow. How you doing, XM Slow? I hope you're having a good one. 
We're in a cave outdoors on day 497 of Interloper. We've been mapping. We're right, uh, we're right up over here right now. Right up here above the Grand Meadow and the Forager's uh remnant. We got we were out in a we were out in a blizzard. There was a really nasty blizzard that we were out in, which really just put a damper on our entire day. <coughs> As you can tell, I got a little bit of the crud, but it's mainly just, uh, you know when you're in a room that has an air conditioner for too long, it just kind of messes with your throat? Mine always gets messed up like that. It's bad. Oh, we're in the, we are in, we are in the fun zone. We are in the fun zone, my friend. This zone is all about the fun. All right, we got a deer here, which is kind of nice. We can grab his stuff if we really wanted to. We're going to actually head back over this way because I'd sort of like to map this up. I'd like to map this up right in here. <clears throat> uh, actually, I, I am. We uh, <clears throat> It was a lot of fun. My son and I had a good time. We got to play a lot of fun games. Um, it was fun going to the convention with him. Um, I, did, I, did, I got okay sleep. You know, convention sleep is always kind of a... Uh, <laughs> It's not something that always happens because uh, you're really tired and you want to stay up and play as many games as you can in the time you have. But uh, we we did. I I am I am refreshed in a sense, I guess. Okay, that worked out okay. I guess we could get up there. Oh, there's ptarmigans here. Well, hi Heidi Ho, ptarmigans. How are you guys? Yeah, but we gotta wait for the other ptarmigan to stop moving. Oh, there was one right behind him. Oh, I scared him away. I, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any. Uh, um, Too much stuff to carry. I don't have any fire hardened arrows because I haven't. I have decided not to make any, which I probably should. I probably should make some fire hardened arrows because I keep just wasting my regular arrows on the damn ptarmigans. It's always nice to have like two or three fire hearted arrows for the ptarmigans. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'd say I'm pretty. I, I'm. I. I would say maybe not so much refreshed, Laka. <coughs> I don't know if refreshed is the right word, but I'm feeling invigorated from the from the gaming convention. I'm feeling invigorated because, you know, I've been away from streaming for a few. It's nice to be back. It, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to, it's fun to be back and I'm excited to get streaming again and kind of get back to, back to life here again. So, okay, I'm going to map up here, I guess, or maybe, maybe, can I get up higher than this? <clears throat> we'll see if I can get up higher here. I don't know if I actually can or not. I have this weird feeling I can, though. Yes, I can. Ooh! My goodness, Dupera with the 32-month resub. Somehow, chat lost connection. Double Somehow, I lost connection with chat. For 32 months. <laughs> oh my goodness, and Jamir with the 28 month resub. Oh my god. There we go. Chat's back up now. I saw that I saw those resubs come through on my other monitor, but not on the group chat. Thank you so much as well, Jamir, for that huge resub too. Appreciate that very, very much. <clears throat> this gives us a nice high spot to map up on. No, yeah, it was just on my end. I, I saw no no problem on this end at all. <clears throat> There we go. Oh, that's much better. Okay. 
There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Teresa. Hello, hello. Well, there haven't been any streams here for the last couple of days. Um, I haven't streamed since, what, Thursday of last week. Because I was gone. On my gaming convention fun. So, but welcome, but welcome back. I understand about being busy as well. Okay, so we got the deer corpse over here. If I built the fire right here, I could harvest this. Actually, though, hold up. Wait a minute. Yeah, you didn't miss anything. Yep, you've missed absolutely nothing. Because I, other than, you know, I, I've had a few videos that have gone up on YouTube. Uh, Civilization VI, I started the Ides of March. Uh, monthly challenge and put that up on YouTube. Um, the uh, Dyson Sphere program series continues there. I've been releasing a few new episodes of the Witcher 3 series to the public view. <coughs> for the members, I've had a few more episodes of Witcher 3 go up for them. Uh, for the members over on YouTube. I got 15. Oh, I'm going to drop those. I'm surprised I didn't drop those before. So I've had a few YouTube stuff go up this weekend, but I didn't have anything... Didn't have anything on the Twitch side. And no streams, because I, I was at the game convention Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then had my brother's birthday as well. So, lots of good stuff. Hey, I just found out the Shaky Bow Glitch happens only after the Moose Stomp. Yeah, that's what we that's what we found at we found as well, Elcor. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that I'm glad you've confirmed that with us though cuz that's that was what we had found out. And that's what we had well we had suspected that. I hadn't I hadn't brave getting another moose stomp to see if it actually was that way though or not. Hold on one second, boys and girls. I need to go grab a tissue real quick. My nose is running. Oh, that tissue right there. My nose is running like crazy today. Woo. You know when you're in an air conditioned room for a while and the air conditioning starts making your nose run and makes your throat all scratchy? Yeah, that's been happening. <clears throat> yeah, it looks a little windy out there. Hubby had to go back to the ship work on Sunday. We got four and a, four and a half to five months. Oh my gosh, Laka! I can I cannot imagine that. That is crazy. That is crazy. So for me, <clears throat> for me, the funnest part of the convention actually had nothing to do with the convention. So here's the scenario: for Saturday night, I get a text out of the blue. From a number that I don't recognize. And I'm looking at this number, you know, and of course when you get a number on your phone and you don't recognize it, of course, what's the first thing you always think? Oh, this must be a scam. You know, somebody's, you know, it must be a scam text. Um, but, you know, it always shows you a little preview of what the text is. And I read the beginning of the text and it says, hey, this is so-and-so. Um... I saw your, you know, and, and I was like, oh, man, I know this guy. This is a guy that I worked with, like, 35 years ago. And I met, I had actually met him. I had actually met up with him back in 2019. I met up with, I met up with uh, Shane and Elizabeth over at a little bar here in Portland because he was up from the Bay Area. And, and he was like, yeah, I'm heading down from Seattle. Uh, take care of some stuff with my mom. I saw you at a gaming convention, you know, it, or how long are you going to be there? I'll stop on by. And I and I was like, cool. And he stopped by and we chatted for God, 9, 10, 11, 12, like, like five hours. <laughs> he chatted for like five hours, got caught up on life and everything. It was really, it was really freaking cool. It was actually, it was actually really awesome. Yeah, it's always cool to reconnect. Yeah, it's awesome to reconnect with old friends. Yeah, I hadn't seen him for about five years or so. <clears throat> but uh, it was super cool to see him again and uh, and hang out with him for a little bit. Yep, 
Yeah, it was, it was really super nice. So I do not have either... Do I not have enough? No, I have enough ptarmigan to do... Oh, shoot. I just don't have enough water. So yeah, that was that was actually my favorite card of the, part of the convention, and it, it literally had nothing to do with the convention at all. <clears throat> had nothing to do with the convention at all, other than he saw my post on Instagram <clears throat> that referred to the convention. And he was like, "Hey, I can stop on by and see you." So that was really really cool. And there's pictures of me and him, me and him up on up on the website or up on uh, Instagram. Yeah, we used to work together at a, at the comic book shop. Well, I actually worked at the comic book shop, and he was a customer there. And then when me and my my ex now, but me when me and my wife were getting uh, you know married back then, um, we were moving away, and my boss was looking for somebody to take over for me. And so I got him, I, you know, I sort of told my boss, well, you need to hire, you need to hire Shane. He's a good guy. He, he's really enthusiastic about everything. He'll be really, you know, he'll be a good worker for you. So it was pretty dang cool to see him again. All right, let's get this deer meat cooked up. Other than that, we played a lot of fun games, had a good time. It was good, good stuff all around. <clears throat> yum yum all right we got that done we're getting some some uh getting some broth done okay these are all too small yeah these are all too small to to be uh those are all too small to make more ptarmigan broth the nice thing about broth is that broth does not smell. So you can carry the broth around, and it's way more calories than the regular ptarmigan meat is. Uh, half a kilo of ptarmigan meat, well, full kilo is about 400 calories. The broth's like 850. So it it, 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 it sm doesn't smell, and it's a very good way to carry around some food. I mean, it doesn't have any, uh, you know, vitamin C or anything, but you can. Oops. And then I accidentally drank it. You can drink it, and it does give you a warm-up bonus, so, that, you know, that's something, too. <clears throat> I accidentally drank it. By the way, where are Coastal Highway Polaroids? I've checked all locations I found for them online, but found nothing. But does the broth have the same amount of liquid or the equivalent as water? You know, I, I don't know. The broth does not. I can tell you that right now. The broth... The broth does not add the same amount of water. It adds actually very little water. So as far as a water substitute, it doesn't it doesn't work very well. By the way, where are the coastal highway Polaroids? I've checked all locations and found online and found nothing. The one I usually, the one I usually find the Polaroid at Elcor, uh, you've probably been up there, but the one that I usually find it at is the, um, let's see, where is it? The one I usually find it at is this, this corpse up here by the fishing camp. You go down the rock, down to the rock wall, and you climb up here. I usually find it on that corpse there. That's, that's usually the one I find. But um, I don't remember where I found mine in Coastal Highway. I honestly cannot remember. But that corpse up there, it's on top of a mountain right by a tree. <clears throat> There'll be like a backpack you gotta open. That's usually where I find mine at. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I know they, I know they have added i believe they've added some spots uh to it some spots that you can find the polaroid at now but i'm not sure where some of those spots those new spots are i would if i were you i'd go back and double check 
some of the spots that you've already been to because maybe maybe you just missed it i've done that before where i've gone back over and i was like oh there was a container especially if it was like a blue container just sitting on snow because those have a white lid and if i wasn't i i've gone back sometimes and seen one of those that i was like i didn't see that before because it had a white lid and it just kind of blended into the snow so I'd say go back and double check some of the areas that may that may give you uh that may let you may you you may find it you may go back and just smack yourself in the head and go there it was right there and I didn't see it because <clears throat> I've done that a couple times I've done that once or twice I need to lay down I know you need to lay down but we need to drink something first. Yeah, see how little water I got back from drinking that broth? <clears throat> the broth does not give you much water back at all. So basically, it sucks your water up without giving a whole lot back. It's not... The teas are very... Um, <clears throat> the teas are very good return for your money on the... Uh, on the... Um, on uh, on water the tea the teas actually give you as much if not even a little bit more water than it gives you as much water as the uh as the water would um but it, but but it's not yeah the the broth is not a, a not a good replacement for water okay well this is interesting <clears throat> I checked, just checked all of them in the previous two hours. I doubt I missed it since I looked everywhere out of it. I'll be, I will check again. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid, Elcor, I don't have, <clears throat> I don't have the expertise of, of, of an answer for you because I usually have found it pretty easily in that zone. And it's usually up in that spot with the body in the backpack. Um, so, yeah, if it wasn't up there, I'm not sure what to tell you there. <clears throat> okay, so what can we do here? Let's go ahead and break down these arrows. But overall, the gaming convention was awesome. So much fun. I had to make a dedicated trip back to Milton recently because I realized I missed the jackrabbit thermos. Oh, no! <laughs> You're like, oh, shooting shenanigans. <clears throat> well, Chris, I've, I've, I've done, had to make dedicated trips back sometimes because I'd forget to pick up my backpack, which is or my uh, bedroll, which is really embarrassing. When you get somewhere and you're like, oh, crap, I forgot my bedroll. Now, the bear wanders down there. The wolves are not over there anymore because we killed them. Yeah, forgetting the bedroll, that is the worst. It's like, it's such a it's such a sinking feeling when you get somewhere and you go to this menu here and you're like, Where, where's my bedroll? The bedroll's all grayed out. And you're like, oh, you got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> and the game's like, nope. Oh, yeah, and the pots and pots. Yep. Forgetting your pots and pans is is, is, is the worst, too. Oh, that's a good that's a good mapping right there <clears throat> i like that genie girl hello hello i know this will be a ways into the future but what do you think your new long dark challenge will be after this one um well after we get all the all the regions mapped genie girl i'd like to pro i'm probably gonna split long dark into a couple of different things going forward sylvan thank you so much for the two month resub oh my goodness thank you so much doing great doing great had an awesome gaming convention i'm reinvigorated and back to streaming 
But what I'll pro what I'm probably going to do after this is I'm going to probably split my streaming into a couple different days uh, or a couple different uh, uh, long dark uh, things going on. Because I'd still like to play this character and I'd like to advance their days to at least... I'd like to get to my personal best of 826 and maybe push them to 1000 if I could. But that's going to be more just of a grind. That's going to be kind of something where maybe like two days a week I'll just kind of grind on this guy and we'll just chat, answer questions, you know, and just kind of have fun with them and maybe make up little mini challenges where we'll be like, hey, let's go over here and do this or let's go over here and do this, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I'm not really, I haven't really thought about what my next, like, series will be though. Um... I haven't really thought about it. So, you know, if anybody has any good ideas, always be feel free to throw them out there and, you know, we'll see if any of them stick. Um, sometimes, I, I mean, some of the, some of the, uh, some of the best ideas I've ever had for things have just been suggestions from the community being like, hey, I'd be, really be curious to see if you could do, you know, X or really see, curious if you could do Y. Um, it's like, I think, I think the, uh, Living 50 days in every zone consecutively was a was a viewer suggestion where they were like, I wonder if you could live for 50 days in a single zone starting an interloper. And I was like, well, hey, let's see if we can live in 50 days in every zone, period. Start in one zone, you can live 50 days there and you never, you can't move out of that zone until 50 days has passed. And once you've lived 50 days in that zone, you have to leave. You can't come back. <clears throat> or you can't, you know, live in that zone anymore. You can come back in it and pass through it, but that was sort of a viewer idea, so. Where will be my main base to continue? Um, probably, I'll, I'll probably not have a main base. I'll probably just keep moving around the world because that kind of keeps it interesting and fresh. Um, but I have a lot of, I have a lot of bases. <clears throat> An Eternal Knight Gunloper. That could be interesting. I, you know, I've never done, I've never done a, an actual run in Eternal Night for for a long time. And maybe it'd be fun to do like a hundred days of Eternal Night or something like that. And maybe make it a Gunloper as well, because that'd make it kind of interesting. Because I haven't I haven't done a Gunloper either. Uh, a late late stoner. So, you know, that that does that's an inter yeah, I haven't done a gun loper in ages. Uh, you know, we could do it we could do it where it's just like a series of a hundred days. That'd be kinda cool. That'd be kinda neat. So I, I, I like that I like that idea. I will I will I will uh I'm gonna write that I'm gonna write that one down because if I don't I, I'm at the age now where if I don't write stuff down I forget it. <laughs> I'm gonna call it Night Loper. Yeah, the uh, the uh, it cook, it cooking, cooking all recipe challenge, or as many as you can get, as many as you can get. Because I believe I believe we I believe we realized, uh, Genie Girl, that there's not enough in Interloper. There's not enough um, uh, carrots for 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 cooking all the stuff that you want to cook. I think we realized that an interloper, there's not enough to do it. So, um, we, we'd have to, you know, we'd have to basically be like, hey, we're going to try to cook as much as we can, but obviously we won't be able to cook everything. We can cook every pastry. That is true. We could, we could, we could be that, we could be, uh, uh, the paste, uh, like a pastry chef challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we could be a pastry chef and be like hey we're cooking we're cooking all the pastries all the pastries are being cooked hey old fart how you doing hello hello welcome on in my friend the sweet tooth ch okay that, that i like that i like I, I just put pastry chef challenge so if we were to do that we would have to find the 
Briar House, Stalker Pie, the Dock Workers Pie. <clears throat> so we would need a couple taters, but that's not a problem. Taters are easy. Wow, we'd have to get a rockfish for that. Ooh. Ooh, that'd be wild. Uh, Lily's Pancakes, we'd have to get... So we'd have to get these five recipes, and we'd have to get to Cooking 5 to do it. Um, all of these would be easy to do. The Coastal Fish Cakes, we'd have to get the recipe for that. But, um, yeah, all the rest of them would be pretty easy to do. That That's interesting. Have to use the female for that one. Hey, we could, we could do it with a... We could do it with an Astrid. We could make it an Astrid, the Sweet Tooth Astrid Challenge. Hey, Ath, what's that I hear outside? I don't know, Peace Dog. What's that you hear outside? What's that you hear outside? I don't know what you hear outside, Peace Dog. I hope you're doing good, though, man. Hope everything's going good for you. There's an SPC called Sweet Tooth. She's super addicted and needs them to live. All right. Um, let's drop that here. Oh, I need to drop these in here. This is going to be our little mini base for a minute. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so where we're at right now is right over here. The bear, the bear corner is down here, but to get to that, <clears throat> we're going to have to go fight the bear. Two speedrun challenges, neither of which I'm good enough to complete myself. A squirrel challenge in which you have to go to each region with oaks and gather and bring them back to one base. Region with oaks. Oh, and, and gather the acorns. The, the acorn, you have to go get, get acorns and bring them back. That, that's that's an interesting that's an interesting idea of course I wouldn't be doing it as a speed challenge because <laughs> I don't do speed challenges <laughs> I don't do, I don't do speed challenges I I hate be I I hate the pressure of speed I'm I'm not Mike I'm not good enough to do those either I don't have I don't have the uh, I don't have the patience to do that I like I like a slow plodding a slow plodding game. That's why I like Long Dark so much, is I can sort of plod along at my own old man pace and be like, I'm I'll get there eventually. One day I'll get there. We gotta be really careful here because the bear's right around this corner. We'll probably hear him before we see him. Every version of rifle bows and pistols. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to drop it down to stalker to do that, unfortunately. Hey, Sal Sided, how you doing? I better get my my flare gun out just in case. This place fortunately has a lot of logs you can safe hunt this guy from. Hey guy. He got sad. <clears throat> the other would be a retrieve each service film with different beverage. Rose hip, birch tea, coffee, broth. You could do burdock tea.
Poor feller. He's all sad. He's a sad bear, Mr. Grinch. <clears throat> I've sort of already filled all the all the tea all the tea ones. Again, I don't have patience to do it quickly. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'll take as much time as I want. I don't know what it is about speed challenges. I just never I never I get may it might be because I just get too distracted. I just get distracted by it all, and I'm... Oh, there's the bear's corpse. And, uh, and then I get distracted by things and stuff, and so I never get to it. Oh, there's the bear's corpse right there. He went Athena, and I'm running back over here where there's a little cave and a little spot that you can make a fire. Maybe. 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 Remember when you could make the fire on the bear? <laughs> But I, I, I like the I like the ideas. See, I, I like the ideas, Mike, of something like that where I could do that as like a uh, I could do those in conjunction with whatever I'm doing, you know, filling up those thermoses with teas and stuff. I like the idea of that. All right, so let's go ahead and put out the. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Oh, do I not have my travoy on me? I don't. I must have left it behind for reasons. Yes, I did. Okay. I left it behind for reasons. Not sure why I feel so <clears throat> tired. Because you're tired. I sort of like the long haul as well. I do like the I do like the idea of the hundred days, a hundred days of night, but on a gun on, on a gun loper. Much longer. Maybe we could do a hundred days of night sweet tooth challenge, where we're trying to make the pie, the, make all the make all the pies in in uh, in. Uh, we're trying to make all the pies. That'd be kind of fun. I don't even honestly know where this bear spawns at. To be honest, to be completely honest, I do not know where this guy even spawns at. Now I'm curious. Does he even have an actual cave down here? I don't even see his actual, like, cave. Pancakes are a dessert. Yum. But, Mike, I like both those ideas. Those are both great ideas as far as, like, things you can do. Like you though, I'm I'm not good enough to do the uh, do the speed challenges. <laughs> um, maybe this is where his cave is back here. Where the hell does this go to? Where the hell does this go to? I probably can't map now. Nope. Oh, this is this. Are those bones there? Oh, there's a body here. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I don't see where his cave is. Like, where there's, like, bones or anything for his cave. I'm probably just missing it. It's kind of foggy. It's not real bright out, so I'm probably missing Well, I'm not real bright either, so, you know. Perfect combo. 
Go back and see if you can climb the cliff. Oh, the cliff over there? I don't think that one's climb. I'm pretty sure that one's not climbable. But I'm super, super duper tired. So I think we need to head back and get some rest. That wasn't too bad of a bear kill. I was playing last fall and watched the squirrels gather hide acorns for their winter, and, and when I thought of that, I agree, speedruns aren't my favorite. One of the draws to me is long dark is the slow pace. Well, I, and even not so, you know, Mike, it's not even for me, it's not even that it, it, the slow pace of it. I do like that aspect, but I the thing I really like about long dark that's sort of parallel to that is that you can take it at whatever speed you want. There's nothing saying you have to go fast. There's nothing saying you have to go slow. Your play style can be whatever fits for you. If you like doing speed runs, go for it. Nothing can stop you. As long as you can live, you can do a speed run. If you like doing longer, drawn out kind of plodding runs, you can do that. You know, it, it, it's it's cool that, you know, the long dark has a, ha, is very malleable as far as as you know how you can approach it uh you know the 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 right or wrong doesn't really exist it's just can you live so i i do i do like that a lot but i, I like the, i like the idea of the uh of the acorn challenge just like not um not using any of them just gathering them and bringing them back to say the carter hydro dab and just sco storing like a hundred acorns maybe doing Maybe doing like uh, uh, maybe doing like a hundred acorns in the Carter Hydro Dam or something like that. <laughs> but see, for me, Mike, I like taking it slow like that. I, I like taking it slow and and uh, uh, you know just kind of kind of doing because I, I like exploring. For me, the fun part of the Long Dark is the exploration, the discovery of where loot items are, the the struggle to balance getting loot versus. Uh, versus uh uh you know moving you uh, moving you know fast enough that loot's not decaying and that sort of stuff i wish there were more games like this one i don't know I, I don't like the build to survive survival games and this is the only one i know of where the world is your real enemy yeah you, you know the, the the build the build to survival games is sort of the standard in the industry aussie and i don't mind them i there's some of them that i really enjoy but generally, those fall into a pretty consistent pattern of you build, you survive, you gain levels, you build bigger things, you you you, you basically build up to a point where um, you, you, the survival aspect is kind of secondary to it. Um, that you know, the food, water, cold, tiredness. They're they're all kind of like they're they're annoyances, but they generally don't kill you. Generally, what kills you is either enemy AIs or animals in the game. That's what generally gets you in those kind of games. You're 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 not really getting beaten down as much by the environment as you are in the long dark. The long dark the long dark, like you said, the world is your enemy. the The environment is the biggest enemy in the long dark. You, over it over the course of a game you will on average lose more health to the environment than you will lose to any animal that ever attacks you all the animals all the animals combined in the entire game that in, in, attack you for the entirety of your run is dwarfed by the amount of damage you've taken from the environment and i think that's the cool thing about the long dark is that Generally, your death is probably an animal attack or something like that, but that that death has been aided and abetted by the weather beating you down and slowly whittling away at you to the point that one animal can take you out, which is kind of cool. <laughs> which is kind of cool that you know it, it's like it's like yeah yeah the wolf killed you, but if you hadn't been at you know. 
40% health because you'd been out in the cold freezing your butt off forever, the wolf may not have killed you. The rabbit from the cave. <laughs> well, that rabbit, Zylock, that rabbit. Yeah, look at the bones. It's just a rabbit. What's it going to do? Ah, run away, run away. Whoa, hello. Run away, run away. That's what that wolf just said. Run away. That wolf just scared the crap out of me. Run away. Mystery Lake Cash and Pelts and Workbench with a hacksaw and toolbox. Mystery Lake is a great place to go. I like... I Does flower run out? Uh, flower does run, run out, yes. There's only, there's only a finite amount of flour in the game, Pizza. Outdoor living is another good one where you're not allowed to sleep inside at all. Interesting. I, I have I have, I have not checked that one out. I'll have to give that one a looky-see. I wanted to go back here and map that body out if I could. So we kind of got down here into the bear's bend. Is your favorite surprise bear location? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. This is one of my favorites as well. The nice thing about this place, though, is there's a lot of places in this in this surprise location that you can, you know, climb up on. Like, I mean, pretty much any one of these trees you can climb up on, and the bear pretty much can't get to you. So as long as you turn your volume up and you're listening, you'll hear the bear way before you see him in this region. Yeah, I don't I don't think you can climb up this cliff here. No, this is this is unclimbable here. There's no way to get up that. Of course the of course the wind picks up now. I also wanted to see if I could find the bear's cave back here, but I don't see it. I was thinking the bear might be back here, but I don't see him. So we are not in we are not out of the wind there. That's interesting. Hey Oscar, how you doing? We're out of the wind here. Can I get a Maglins? Heck yeah! Heck yeah! Look at that Maglins fire! <laughs> you were in your, <laughs> outside with your family one day a bunny came in the yard. I started yelling, run away! <laughs> Thank goodness and of course you probably said it like, run away, run away! <laughs> and they're like, what What the hell is going on? This pack is getting too heavy. You, you know, as, as a nerd, Mike, we I get that look all the time because I'll make references to things that people have no idea what I'm talking about. And I'll be like, don't worry about it. <laughs> I've never found a cave back here. I just thought he lived at the landslide. Yeah, I, you know, usually Zylock, there'll at least be, even if there's not a cave, there'll be some little like sheltered area that he just kind of hangs in. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. It's, ve it's very weird. And by the way, boys and girls, if you could go over and give Oscar a follow, Give Oscar a follow. Uh, check out his channel sometime. Uh, could you maybe give Oscar a shout out real quick, Anora? That would be awesome. If everybody could go over and give her Oscar's channel a follow. That would be great. Last playing some Long Dark. That's not Long Dark, but there he is. That's Cindy's hubby. 
and a good guy all around. I mean, Cindy puts up with him, so he's obviously a good guy. <laughs> Yeah, Oscar's like, yep. <laughs> true, true enough, man. True enough. <laughs> He's at least a lucky guy. He is a lucky guy, yes. Hey, zombie vamp, how you doing, buddy? All right, let's go ahead and throw that in there and throw that in there. Get that harvested up. Ugh. Wait a minute. Why does the character hold the hacksaw on the top instead of the handle? I uh, don't know. It's a it is a it is a little bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. Oh well. I I took uh, I I had my gaming convention this weekend, so I was down I was I was down at my gaming convention, and then um, I drove down to to Pendleton yesterday to pick my friend up because uh, she was in Idaho, and I met her uh, about halfway uh, from uh, I the high Idaho area in Pendleton yesterday to pick her up and bring her back. So had a full day out there. Am I playing as Bigfoot? No, not not playing as Bigfoot. There's no Well, I mean I do I do have big feet. Yes, we have big feet. But uh yeah, the game convention was a lot of fun and then uh a, a, a guy that I worked with about 35 years ago who who I saw back in that was about 2019. He came by the convention and hung out a little bit and that was a lot of fun. On Saturday night, he just showed up and was like, "Hey, I'm I'm nearby here." What are you up to? Can I stop by and see? And I was like, yes. That was cool. But Scalbus, I hope you're having a good one. How are you? Hello, hello. Raven Cove with that 15 month resub with the Twitch Prime on the Twitch side. Welcome back in for 15 months, Raven Cove. How are you there, Raven Cove? I hope you're having a great day. Getting kind of thirsty. We are getting a little thirsty. Just resubscribe for 15 months. We are getting a little thirsty. But hey ya. Hi. How's it going, Raven? I hope I hope everything I hope your week's going good so far. But yeah, we're back. We got our regular schedule this week. We'll be on today. We're gonna be doing Long Dark and Nightingale today. We're gonna be uh of course, taking Wednesday off because I need to get some recording done. And then Thursday, we'll be back with some more uh, fun stuff we'll be uh, doing on Thursday. We will be doing uh, Long Dark, and then we will be jumping in back into um, State of Decay 2. We'll be getting back into our run on State of Decay 2 and having fun with that. And then on Friday, we will be doing, of course, Long Dark, but then we will be going back into Horizon Forbidden West. We started playing that last Thursday because it came out right before the game convention. So I played that for a little bit last Thursday. We, we, got, we barely got through the prologue before my son got here, and uh, we left off there. And so we'll be doing that on Friday, and then Saturday we'll get back into our... Um, we'll get back into Medieval Dynasty, and Sunday after Long Dark, we'll be we'll be playing a little bit of um, Escape the Pacific again, because uh, we finished up our Subnautica run this last Sunday. Last Sunday, we finished up our Subnautica run, our yearly Subnautica, and that was a lot of fun. That's up on YouTube right now if you want to check it out. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff, lots of stuff going on this week. Lots and lots of stuff. Lots of fun things. I'm really excited to get back into Forbidden West. I had a lot of it was it was a little it was a little weird getting used to the controls again. 
but um, definitely excited to get back into it. Can't believe I forgot to drop my hides and guts off at the at the place. All right, we're gonna harvest this up. It's not gonna slow you down. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, buddy. Don't worry about it. It's all gonna be okay. So yeah, we got lots of stuff planned for this week. Lots and lots. Oh, plus uh, when I was talking to Shane, I was I was talking to him a little bit, you know, about my you know new imp you know since I I hadn't seen him since 2019, so I was talking to him about my new lack of employment situation, you know, that I'm that I'm pretty much now self-employed. I'm doing Twitch and I'm doing Lyft and stuff and he was taught he told me about this company that's local it's actually like it's literally like two streets away from where I live and they do uh fleet car it basically they they reposition fleet cars uh across the United States um and he worked for them for a little while and basically they just give you a car and tell you drive it up to here and we'll pay you money they just pay you to drive fleet cars around so I'm gonna look into that um, and uh, maybe maybe uh, do that. So, because I, I I love to drive. I love driving. Um, I've I've driven a lot. <laughs> there was a time in my life when I was pr putting probably putting three to four thousand miles a month on a car, and that I did that for about ten years. That's back when I was working for the Oregonian, the the local newspaper. So. Uh, I don't mind driving at all, and it's like, hey, if somebody would pay me to drive, that would be pretty cool. I mean, Lyft pays me to drive, but it's a, it's something I could do that would be kind of fun. And he said they got fleet cars they take up to Seattle, down to the Bay Area. They even take them across the country sometimes. You do have to pay for your own lodging or tra you know travel back home. But you can, you know, you can figure that out. I mean, he's, he said it, you, you know, usually, and, and also, the other thing with that is any lodging or travel back home is, is since it's, you're an independent contractor, that's all a write-off on taxes anyway. So it's not like you're really losing money. You're just basically getting to write it off later in the year as a business expense. So, yeah, it, it, yeah I'm going to check it out. See, see what they, you know, see what they have to offer. It kind of fits with my I like to drive type mold. Hey, I could do, you know, if I got a long cross country, uh, cross country, uh, um, um, uh, ride or something, I, I could do, I could, uh, do a stream from the road. <laughs> I, I would love to do the fleet car thing. I did it uh, for a rental, uh, car company a couple of times. The gaming convention, Fire Monkey, was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. It was so much freaking fun. I don't know if you saw the pictures up on Instagram. Um, but we had a blast the entire time. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the fr Friday was a little bit wild because we lost power for about, let's see, 12, one, about, we lost power for about four hours. The, the, there was a lot of, there was a lot of ice coming down. There was, there was hail and stuff coming down and we completely lost power for about four hours on Friday which was absolutely bananas. Um, but overall, I had a great time. I mean, it, I couldn't have asked for a better convention. Uh, my, son, my son was there, and we had a lot of fun. Played a lot of games, a lot of new games, some old games, but a lot of new games as well. So that that was a blast. I'm going to jump dump a bunch of stuff here so I can... So I can go back and forth. Oh, I have those water pills on me. I'll have to remember that. Actually, I'm going to take a couple of these. Just for some water. Let's see. I'm going to leave my cattails here and that. My coffees. My tea. My broth. My salt. My arrowheads. Oh, I got two pry bars. I'll have to break one of those down. Flares. Sewing kit. Yeah, I've, I've picked up. I've picked up some stuff along the way here 
Don't need the hacksaw right now either. Bedroll I don't need at the moment. All right, we're down to good weight now. Was that East PAX convention? Uh, no, it's it a convention. It's a local convention called GameStorm. Uh, this was their 24th year. This was GameStorm number 24. So they've been they've been doing GameStorm now for 24 years. And I've gone to a lot of them. I haven't gone to every one. There, there's a lot of years. There were some years I just couldn't make it. And of course, you know, COVID happened and there was about two years they didn't do the convention at all. Um, but yeah, this, this is their 24th convention. So 24th year doing it. But yeah, it's called GameStorm. You can, you can see it at uh, GameStorm.org. Um, there, I just threw the link up in chat. But it do, it 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 does it does sometimes happen, um, it does sometimes happen during the, uh, uh, the PDX LAN, a uh, convention is sometimes the same weekend, uh, so that there's sometimes a LAN convention that goes on that same exact weekend, which is kind of hard for for one of my friends because he does a lot of he does the PDX LAN uh, as well. And so he can't make it to both. And usually he chooses the LAN uh, convention over it. <laughs> Which is totally cool, you know. Gotta have your priorities somewhere. Alright, I'm gonna dump these couple pieces of small meat over here. Yeah, oh yeah, that that's the thing. Yeah, it's a lot it's a lot rarer convention. So that that is that is that is why he chooses it, you know. He's much more into that. Ah, that sizzling of meat. That nice sizzle. Well we got this mapped up pretty well over here. There's this little area here I haven't gotten been able to get. But we got a, I mean, we're getting a pretty good map of Blackrock, which is nice. We do need to go back up over here to the Polaroid. We will need to, we'll need to map up this area. We know that the moose is over here by the prison, because we saw the moose marks there. Unfortunately, there's not much you can get up here, because there's nothing up here, really. But we do need to map all this down here. There's a couple wolf packs down here as well. We do need to map down in this area. There's like a cave down in here that we'll need to map. And then, of course, there's the exit out into the, uh, the Keeper's Pass north and south down there, too. This channel just popped up in my recommended. Not bad, though. I'll stick around for a bit. Hey, Shadow in the Light. How you doing? Well, thank you for coming by, Shadow in the Light. I'm glad I popped up in your recommendeds. That's that's kind of nice. I guess it's cool to pop up in recommendeds. If you have any, you know, any questions about Long Dark or anything, feel free to ask. Even even if even if we've talked about it a thousand times, it doesn't matter because probably somebody else out there is curious about the same thing you are. I'm always like, yeah, there's no there's no dumb questions about the Long Dark because this game has a lot of things to know about in it um oh we need to make some water speaking of things to know we need to make a little bit of water let's uh let's get a little a little water going here there there we there we go now nice thing is we actually have these water pills on us so we can we can just we don't even need to boil that water we can just uh we can just go ahead and melt it and we'll be good to go because then we can just turn it into into water wow briar house pie i'd love to make that but we don't have all the things we ain't got all the things. Oh yeah, even if we're playing something else, you know, it's all it's long dark questions are always welcome. Okay, let's grab. Yep, bop, bop, bop. Okay, that's a small piece. That's a small piece. Okay, we're getting all the small pieces out of the way. That's nice. Let's get these small pieces put down here. Bink and badoop. There we go. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Just make myself just making myself some chicken for dinner. Yum. Now, what kind of chicken? Are we doing fried chicken? 
roasted chicken, uh, grilled chicken. Eh, you know, there's also there's all sorts of different chickens you can be doing. As long as it's not choke chicken. Hey now. <laughs> Oh, did I did I just boil I just boiled that water I didn't mean to do that. Hey, uh, blur, how are you? Hello, hello. All right, we got thirty minutes till it's melted. Then I'm gonna grab it off the fire. The rules are simple, but the game makes it sure you can never execute the rules. Yes, the game does its best to make it so you can't execute the rules. All right, let's go ahead and get our water pills. Ding, ding. Just some chicken in the oven. Wouldn't know a specific name for it on in, in, in English. Oh, so that that's just that's just like grilled chicken, basically. I think that's like a that's like grilled that's like that's like grilled maybe roasted chicken. I guess I guess it might be roasted chicken. But very yummy. Chicken is always good. I, I like I like I like some good chicken. So gonna get a lot colder soon it's gonna get a lot colder soon but we aren't we aren't gonna let that bother us drop that there big piece big piece yeah baby there we go there we go but yeah you know shadow in the light i generally stream on youtube for i well i stream on youtube as well as twitch i do both um i was doing kick for a while there but kick just became like a Kick is kick is weird. It's like everybody on kick is just trying to sell you something. It's it's it it, it it reminds me of the Dread Pirate Roberts, you know, who said, you know, life is pain. Anyone who tells you different is selling something. You know. And that's what I feel like with kick. It's like everybody's trying to sell you something. That's what they're trying to do. So So I'm not doing kick any longer. I decided against it. I I, I wasn't I, I I don't get any viewers really over there anyway, other than people selling me stuff. But yeah, so I, I stream on Twitch as well as YouTube, and we pretty much do it Monday, Tuesday, when Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, the only day I don't really stream on Twitch is on Wednesday, although I will occasionally stream on Twitch on Wednesday if I'm if I'm feeling it, you know, if we're feeling it. 37. We got a couple hours left there. It's getting a little little dark out here. Getting a little bit on the dark side. I'm cooking a bear too by the water cottages and coastal highway. Nice. Nice. So does that mean a no stream tomorrow? Yes, no stream tomorrow. I got I gotta get I gotta get some uh, recording done tomorrow, Elk, or I'm way behind on my recording. So I get what you mean, yeah. I mostly watch stuff I only watch stuff on YouTube, but hey, I'm gonna subscribe to you like cool dude. Aw, oh, thanks, Shadow in the Light. I, I play a lot of other games as well. We do <clears throat> we dabble with a little grand strategy games with like Civ Six and uh, Stellaris. Um I mainly do I mainly play and I really enjoy First person survival game. Uh, first person survival games are kind of my jam. That's that's what I, that's what I really enjoy playing overall. Um, the other stuff is all kind of secondary to that. Although, like right now, we just started playing Horizon Forbidden West because I really like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, Uh, so I really enjoy I, I, I enjoy I, I was really excited they ported that one over to uh, they ported that over to PC which I was really happy about oh geez and it's an Aurora oh fancy schmancy pants oh and it's really loud and I play a little bit of State of Decay 2 which isn't really it's kind of survivally, but it's more zombie survivally. But you know, and Wednesdays when Ath films for his other channel, Taxi Cab Confessions. Whoa! Am I planning a return to Seven Days to Die? Um, I'm gonna wait till Seven Days to Die. I'm gonna wait a little while on Seven Days to Die, um, until they come out with a little bit more stuff. 
Um, I think they're getting ready to launch, if I'm not mistaken, I think they're getting ready to uh, upgrade again to like Alpha 22 or something like that. Um, but I, I am gonna, I am gonna return to Seven Days to Die. We just finished up our Seven Days to Die in the Wild Wild West. Um, we finished that up. And then I think I'm gonna return and play some Seven Days to Die. I don't know, maybe like May or June-ish. I, I kind of... Seven Days to Die is a weird one. I love Seven Days to Die, but for me, it gets a little stale after a while. And, and I like to take a little bit of a break from it. I almost get, like, reinvigorated to play it again. You, you know, you ever get that feeling where it's like, I really like this game, but I need a break from it for a few months, and then when I come back, I'm like, yeah, let's go! Um, have I played Sons of the Forest? Um, for me... I, I play I played the forest and I didn't I wasn't I don't I don't generally like horror genre stuff. It's not my jam. Um I'm a big pussy. Hi, Mrs. Honeypot, by the way. Um I'm a big pussy, so I don't like I don't like horror genre stuff for the most part. So the forest wasn't really my jam, and Sons of the Forest looked like more of the same. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind gore and stuff like that because, like, I play State of Decay 2. Um, but for me, the forest is a little—I don't know. It, it's just kind of creepy with all the weird. It's got—it's got a bunch of weird stuff in it. It's got a bunch of weird stuff in it. I'm not that—I'm not that excited. I just didn't, couldn't get excited about it. The guy's dragging you underground and trying to eat you. Just didn't. It didn't jive with me. It didn't jive with me that much, Shadow. <laughs> I, I think I think Sons of the Forest looked really nice. Um, but yeah, I just I couldn't pull the trigger. Couldn't pull the trigger. I get jaded if I play the same game too much. I, I like to keep a uh, game new and exciting. See, for me, that's I think one of the things. That's one of the things I like about the Long Dark. Is for me. The long dark never loses its uh, appeal. I can pl I can play well. I have played. I have played the long dark for over seven years on stream, and I'm still not bored of it. There's always something new around. Oh, jeez. Yeah, run away, run away, Green Wolf. There's still it's still exciting to me to play the long dark. Static. Hey, buddy. How's it going? And Mrs. Punny, Honeypot, I hope you're having a great day. You tried Sons of the Forest? I I watched some streamers that I know play it, and I was like, yeah, it's just not for me. Which, that's the beauty. Of, I think that's the beauty of video games. That's one thing I love about video games, is there's such a wide variety of stuff that there's no right or wrong. Some stuff's for some people, some stuff's for not, not for people. And, and you know... The Long Dark is not for everybody as well. I mean, some people just don't like the Long Dark. Some people love the Long Dark. Some people are meh about the Long Dark. Some people like the story mode better than the survival mode. Not me, but... You know, Miss Honeypot, I love the game convention. I not only love the game convention, but I got to see one of my oldest friends, which was kind of surreal for my son... My son made a very interesting comment uh, to me on the way home after after Shane stopped by and and uh, and and saw me at the game convention. My son was like, um, "Oh, hey, take care, Shadow in the Light. Have a good have good food, my friend." My son my son said said, "Dad, I have never." I, he's like, I, "It was so weird." My son was like, "It was very weird for me, Dad, to meet somebody." Who knew you before you married my mom? And I never, I never thought of that before. But yeah, my son has never really met any friends that I ever have had before, before his mom. And he was like, he was like, it was just a very weird experience. He wasn't like, it was like, it wasn't like it was good or bad. It was just weird to meet somebody who knew you before you knew mom. Because all my friends, you know, that my son has ever met, they've all known me post relationship. It was just very interesting to hear his hear his comment on that. I was like, oh, I hadn't really thought about that. 
Because, yeah, Shane, Shane, I've known Shane since, gosh, 90, 80, 89? I think 89, something like that. You tweaked your back on Friday, Mrs. Honeypot. Oh, God, I hate it when that happens. Sucks getting old, doesn't it? You tweak yourself and you're like, oh, great. Here we go again. <laughs> Done that way too many times. Oh, that's great. That's fabulous. We got a storm. We got a storm. I never met any of my dad's friends from before mom, but he was mom, but he was an old dad 40 when I came along. Yeah, well, you know, and, and that's something I never really thought of, you know, with when when Shane came by, but my son was actually kind of excited to meet him. <laughs> we got blizzards every day. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and, and rip this uh, pry bar apart. Because why not? We got the time. Might as well do it. Uh, let's rip these torches apart. But yes, the game convention was awesome and amazing. And it was great seeing Shane again. I haven't seen him for about five years, which was really, really nice to see him again. Um, I mean, before that, I saw him in 2019, which was actually like... Seeing him in 2019, that was the first time I had seen him in about 25 years probably 25 years no 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 joke at all that's probably the first time i'd seen him in about 25 years all right we got all that we got all that i got a lot of bandages right now which is odd okay is there anything else i guess i could break this shelf down Oh, oh, yeah, us dads, we all have stories we don't share with our kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's funny because, like, all the guys I game with, my son my son was like, yeah, all the guys, he's, he's, like, he's like, all the guys I game with, he sort of grew up, those guys were kind of like, they were kind of like uncles to him growing up because we all, um... You know, we all played games together. My son was always there while we were playing games together. Um, all right, we're going to head out. The dev for Killer Bean is now in emergency crunch time. Emergency crunch time? That doesn't sound good. I got blizzards every day. Hey, hey, hey. I think we're going to head back towards the prison. Actually, you know, I could go back this way. I just thought about that. Can I get up here? I didn't even think about that. Can I get up over here? I bet I can. if there's anything up here sometimes there'll be little thing oh yeah there's some rose hips up here he's won the game out before june well he's got a little he's got a little bit of time a little bit of time for it well, that's interesting i never knew there was a fence over here I never knew that fence even existed. That's interesting. I, I'd never been over to this side, this side of it before. Oh, shush a pie, doggy. You don't get to pretend you're, you're like, scared of me. Well, you can say you're scared of me. Hey, Cindy! We were just, we were just talking about you. Nothing bad, nothing bad. We were just talking about you. Uh, 
grab all these sticks as we go. It's a lot of water down there. There's the way over. Yeah, cold water down there. What is that? Oh, I thought that I thought that was like a can of tuna or something. I was like, ooh. Yeah, it was wishful thinking. I always wishfully think when I'm playing this game. I'm always trying to stay on the bright side and be like, ooh, it could be a can of tuna for me. Or it could be a, it could be something good for me. It makes me hopeful. We got a lot of wood on us. Have I completed the signal void? Oh no, no, we got we gotta go back to uh we gotta go back to Forsaken Airfield to complete that. All right, so that gives us that there. I would need to basically drop all my fuel to get that. So, last time he said something about the state of the game is that the only thing he needs to do is heavy optimizations, and mostly the in-game island is done. Nice, very nice. Now, is he going to be releasing the game on Steam, or is it an independent project? That he's going to be doing, or is it going on Epic Games, or or both? I take it it's not like going to be on console. Is it going to be on Steam? Nice, very nice. We're just about cold right now. It's getting cold in here. Gonna put on all my clothes. I'm getting hot. Oh, Jesus Christ! Just need to lay down for a bit. <laughs> Me and the wolf, we scared each other. We scared each other there. He got scared. I got scared. <laughs> Me and the wolf had the same exact reaction. <laughs> See, that's why I can't play horror games. Because that happens just in a game, game like this. <laughs> that's why I can't play horror games. Because <laughs> I just lose my stuff every second like that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, man. Just remember, the wolf is the wolf is more scared of you than you are of him. No, he's not. I got stomped by the wolf yesterday, second time in my long dark gaming career. Oh, the moose. Yes, the moose is no fun either. Oh, I'm, I'm crying now. That was too damn funny. Hey, at least, at least at least I got my pulse up. My pulse is up and I'm wide awake now. So what I was wondering, Static, is um um so so you said it was coming out on Steam. So I'm taking it as just a PC game. It's just gonna it's just gonna be on PC. It's not gonna be on consoles like you know, it's not gonna be on Xbox or or or, uh, or uh, PlayStation or anything like that. Oh, there's a flare right there. How did I miss that flare, I wonder? The day I met a man wearing a bear. It'll be on consoles after early access. Okay. Eventually, but that's, that's a little ways down the road still, I take. Nom, 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 nom. Wolf meat. 
Wolf meat, eat him up, yum. I don't think I left anything drying in here. Nope, I did not. In like two years or so. Yeah, it'll take. It'll probably take a little while to port it over to consoles, or to you know make it ready to go on consoles. I know it took a while for Long Dark to get on that, you know, console and Switch and stuff like that. <clears throat> I mean, they could have had a Rise in Forbidden West on on PC right away, but they wanted it to be a console exclusive, you know. Got to be a console exclusive because those are awesome. Got to give those PlayStation boys some something to play with. I was just mad because I wanted to play Horizon Forbidden West when it first came out, so. PlayStation Men, sorry. PlayStation Men. I, I'm just I'm just salty, Gary, because I wanted to play Forbidden West the moment it came out. <laughs> I'm not salty because I don't I'm not salty at PlayStation guy. I'm not salty at the PlayStation players. I get why they do it. I'm just salty about it because I wanted to play it really bad. <laughs> But I'm sure that's the same way that PlayStation, you know, people who play on PlayStation and Xbox, I'm sure that's the way they feel about games that are PC only as well. They're like, well, I want to play it. So I get it. It doesn't make me feel any better about it, but I get it. What day are we on? We are right now on day 501. The 501 genes have occurred, my friends. We have passed the 500 mark. Five hundred has been achieved. Yep, the Levi's. The Levi 501s. <clears throat> I can't even remember if I'm going the right way. We might just be going in a big old circle. Yeah, I think we're going in a big old circle. Yeah, we're going in a big old circle. That's gonna be so slow. I know where that one goes. Getting back through here always confuses me. I don't know why. I get it. I wanted to play uh, many PC only games on uh, and many PC only games on PlayStation. I had to wait a year, and and I do not like being patient. Me either. Although you know, Gary, I'm you know with Horizon Forbidden West, I was like, okay, I know they'll port it eventually because they've already ported you know Zero Dawn. So I, I knew they I knew they would port it eventually, and I was like, well, it's not like there's not going to be lots of games to play between now and then. You know, we always got the long dark. Well, you know, we'll always have other games coming out. You know, there's going to be a lot of stuff to play. So I was like, well, I'll just be patient and wait. I'll be patient and wait for it, even though I don't want to. It's such a maze in Wintermute, but in Survival, everything's open, which turns it into more of a maze. Yes. I know, buddy. You will. Ghost of Tashima, or however it's spelled. I like the PlayStation game they're putting on PC. Yeah, I've heard Ghost of Tsushima is really good. It seems I've heard is I I is it a pretty chonky game? Like is it like <clears throat> is it like Red Dead Two, Witcher Three, Chonk, or is it like you know is it is it like that, or is it is it a little bit smaller overall? Yeah. 
Hey, we're back in prison. It's a big open world. Oh, okay. So it is it is pretty chunky. Okay, it's got it's got a lot of, got a lot of chunk going on. Is that is that style bandit camps big side side mission stuff? Okay. You haven't played it yet, but it is pretty big. Here, have a have a bear hide. Oh, hey, look. There's some cured deer hides. And some cured guts. And some cured birch. Feels Shush. Shush. Buddy. Buddy. I put up with you because I like you, Will. But you can't ruin my day now. You gotta be nice. Ghosts of mission, uh, go, ghosts of side mission, side mission, 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 Shima. Hey, I don't mind. I don't mind side missions. It does just make the game longer because I want to do them all. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta do all the, I gotta do all the side missions. I should have taken my Travoy with me. I was stupid. I was dumb. I didn't take my Travoy with me, which is my totally my fault. That's a fresh deer hide. We gotta drop that. Boop. There we go. Look at all the stuff we got here. We got a ruined bedroll. We got all of our thermosi. Those are thermosize. Or those fl they're flasks. Flasks, but I like calling them thermosi. Um, let's see. We got a little bit of metal here. We got some more metal here. Let's throw that. Let's throw that metal in there. Let's grab the simple tools. Let's fix up our hacksaw. I love side missions too, but it's definitely a style. Not for everyone. Oh yeah, totally. Totally. Not not everybody likes to do all the side missions. I mean, sometimes I'll get a little tired of the side missions too, and I'll be like, okay. I, I'm gonna, you know, I, I like I like let's it's like let's move let's move the story along a little bit, okay? It it does it's a it's a fine line, Zylock, that I think developers have to walk between between giving you side missions to keep you interested and making the world feel like there's more than just the main storyline going on, um, I think Cyberpunk 2077 is a perfect example of a failure in that. When Cyberpunk 2077 first came out, I'm not talking about it from now, but when my first impressions of Cyberpunk 2077, the main thing that I did not like about it is that other than the main mission in the game, the world felt very empty of any sort of life. Um, you had a little bit, you had, you had like the main mission, and then you had like, there was like maybe like two side missions that you could participate in, and then there was ba basically just a ton of, uh, you know, go here and, and there's a gang war going on, go shoot some guys, help the cops, or help the bad guys. Uh, go here and there's a, you know, it, it was these little weird, they weren't even side missions, they were like side jobs, basically. And they got very repetitive very quickly. At first they seemed exciting, but then after you did like two or three of them, you're like, well, this is the same damn thing I just did. What, why do I even care? And so it, it made it very repetitive and very boring very quickly. Whereas like Red Dead... Red Dead did a really good job of you'd just be running around in the open world and you'd stumble across some dude, you know, sitting by, you know, some dude with an overturned cart of, uh, an, you know, circus animals that you needed to help out. And you're like, oh, okay, what, 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 what do I do here? You know, and, and, and it made it actually, it made it actually interesting because it brought life to the game. It was like, and, and, and the guy would... And that, that was, I think, the thing that was cool about Red Dead is sometimes, you know, the guy wasn't there all the time. You know, you had to come at a certain time of day or you had to come at it after a certain event had already happened. It was it was very... It felt more alive than, than it just always being there. So there definitely is ways of, of it happening that make it feel more organic to the player and and red dead and and both that and witcher 3 are very good examples of making it you know feel alive 
<laughs> making it feel alive, but not, you know, overwhelming you. And which Witcher three though almost overwhelms you. I think, I think Witcher three almost goes to the other side. I think Red Dead two hit a perfect balance of all of it, of having the side missions to keep you interested, but not the story. You know, but not just making it so that you, you know, were so overwhelmed by side missions. Witcher three almost gets to that point where there's so many side missions in Witcher three that you kind of get a little overwhelmed after a while, and you just go, okay, I'm just going to go to the do the main story. I'll come back and do some of these contracts, side missions, side quests. I'll do all these, you know, after I get some more story done. I Don't get me wrong. I love Witcher 3. I've been playing the heck out of it, and it's all up on the YouTube channel. But it does have a lot of side stuff going on. A lot more than I think is even necessary. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, like I said, you know, it's all it's all personal preference. But I like a good balance. I like a good balance of, hey, here's some side missions you can do if you want to. Um, and here's the main story. <laughs> Witcher three, I binge total done expan total done expansions included. Love that game. Yeah, well, I'm I'm uh, <clears throat> right now in my members only series on YouTube. I've gotten past the, I, I've gotten to the point where we're fighting the. Uh, the, 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 the wild hunt dude. The wild, God, what, the wild hunt guy. Um, I can't remember his name. Well, I got to that point. And Avalok is, is, uh, very sus. I, I'm not, I'm not quite trusting him. But we got to that point. And then, um, but I've done a lot of side stuff as well. I think I'm like, but I haven't, I haven't done... I haven't got into, uh, uh, I have the two expansions, Heart of Stone and Blood and Water, I think it is, and I haven't done a lot of those missions yet. I haven't done a lot with that. So. So I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to be playing some of that again tomorrow, recording a few more episodes for the YouTube channel. And that is up, that is up on YouTube for members only. The first about 80 episodes are up there for everybody, so you can watch it from the very beginning of Witcher 3 if you want to. But I've got about 100 and... What is it? 150 episodes? I think we're up to, like, episode 150. They're just little half-hour episodes. Um, let's see. Yeah, up to uh, up to episode 143 for, uh, for uh, Witcher 3 right now. So we're almost up to 150 episodes for Witcher 3 at the moment. So, and that's been, that has been a wild ride. That has been quite the wild ride for sure. I'm going to leave some of these here. I do want to repair up my bedroll real quick. Don't be afraid to cry soon. <laughs> Dude, limited income, one subscriber per personality. I like Twitch more. Oh, totally. Totally. Well, like I said, Gary, on the YouTube side, I got like, I, I'm putting out new episodes. Basically, what I did is I recorded a bunch of, of Witcher episodes. They were out there for a long while for members only. And now I am releasing an episode of Witcher 3 every day for everybody. And there's about 80, I think, I think today... Let's see what what do we got what do we got going on today? I think t today episode eighty six released for everybody, so everybody can everybody can watch eighty you know everybody can watch it. It's all available to anybody who want wants to watch it over there. So it's not limited. Just members get early access. They just get early access to it. So I had a dream. I was actually in the long dark, but it was in Russia, and there was some very angry people at me. That sounds scary. Well, yeah, it's just, it, you know, I want to have something special for the members over there. And that seemed to be a nice thing to give them. Where is he? I don't even see him. Oh, there he is. Hello and goodbye. Well, 
Well, Goldsman, that sounds crazy, man. Hello, Mr. Wolf. All right, let's go ahead and grab his feathers. We got a little bit of meat. As they say in Mother Russia, have a wolfy day. A little bit of wood on us now. Oh, did I dump all did I dump all my firewood? Okay, I got a little coal on me still. I don't need that tinder plug. <clears throat> that I do not need. Bye bye. Bye bye. What's my opinion on the Steam Deck? You know, I've never played it. I've never played anything on Steam Deck. Um, is isn't that the like the handheld for Steam? Is that a handheld thing for Steam or something like that? I've never, I've never played, I've never played it though. Hey, there's the Moose. In, in Mother Russia, Long Dark plays you. There's the Moose. Hey, buddy. So there's a moose hunting spot right here that you can get to. We actually, let's go to the other one. <clears throat> this other one's a little closer to him. Be very, very quiet. Gonna try to sneak up to this log here. Damn, I missed him again. Damn, I missed him twice. And we got him that time. Where'd my arrow go here? Oh, it's right there. Well, we got him. Nice. Maglens? Yes. Let's go. So I guess even in my dreams in Russia, government smuggles past people. <laughs> and, and Long Dark was playing me in my dream in a sense. The government was trying to smuggle me out of the country past the people. Interesting. Well, I, I guess that sort of works. <laughs> the prison's a good base if you can get the moosey there. Yes, it is. The wow. 42 kilos. Although we'll probably lose some of it in the snow, to be honest. <clears throat> Unless they fix that bug. Sometimes if you kill an animal on a on an incline, you'll lose some bags in the snow. But it, it looks like they fixed that bug. Because it looks like the bags are... Yeah, it looks like the bags actually transferred up. What the heck is that? What the hell? Oh, it's a moose stomp, and Rusty just resubbed. 
Uh, that's a moose, guys. That's a moose, guys. That's a moose. That's, that's Thank a, you, Rusty, that's for the four-month resub. How you doing, buddy? I was like, why is there why is there a moose stop? I just killed the moose. Why did I? I'm like, why am I hearing a moose coming at me? And it's like, oh, that would be why. <laughs> Been busy work picking up. Nice. Yep, I've been I've been a busy boy too. I had uh, my game convention this last weekend. Had lots of fun at that. Been having a good time with that. I'm a, I'm still a very devout trapper uh, cabin baser. Oh yeah, trapper uh, trapper's cabin is a great base. <clears throat> you know, Goldsman. That's the beautiful. That's the beautiful thing about it is the uh, you know is the freedom to do whatever you want. Ghost was great. I platinum that one. Oh, Ghost of Tashima. You like that one piece, dog? So when are they winner? I, I've heard great stuff about Ghost of Tashima, so. Is there a special reason you want to always quarter? Um, with a moose, I always quarter him because that gives me the guts and the hide really quick. And it also puts everything else out into bags that worst case scenario, I can just run, I can just run. And and the and the animal's already done. It'll take me two hours to harvest him. Get all the bags ready to go, and then worst case scenario, I can just run with the with the with the hide and the guts, and I can just have the uh, I can come back out and get the bags and bring them indoors or to a cave, somewhere. It's mainly just because bad weather happens very often after you kill an animal. That's just the way it goes. You get that bad weather, and suddenly you're stuck, you know, with with a, m a moose that you've only harvested you know, five kilos of stuff off, and you're like, great, I can't even get the hide because now I'm stuck in a blizzard. <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's why that's why I, I always try to quarter the animal. Because it just it just makes it easier to uh to uh uh you know salvage the, the hunt basically. <clears throat> uh quartering is one of the best things they ever added into the game in my opinion. Yeah, and now we have the Travoy, so even even if even if things go horribly bad right now. I could drop the Travoy here. And dump all these bags in it. And all the guts. And the hide. And I could just run. I could just run. I could run for the house if I wanted to. I'm not gonna be able to carry this load for See, it'll it'll hold the whole it'll hold the whole shebang. And now now I can just run. Now I can just run for the prison if I wanted to. Which is just it's just fabulous. It's just fabulous. Isn't some meat lost? Very little. Very very. It's a minuscule amount. Out of 40 some kilos, you maybe lose at most less you lose maybe at three quarters of a kilo. You you really honestly do not lose that much uh, meat. It's like they were saying when you harvest with your hands, you lose meat. You you lose you know, you don't lose that much. <clears throat> you, you you lose a little bit, yes, but it's not it's a minuscule amount. If alpha if 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 a 42 kilo moose um if, if that if you're if you're not if you're not able to survive off of say even if you lost two kilos off the moose if you're not able to survive off the other 40 kilos then you probably have bigger issues than 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 uh you know the couple kilos that you've lost <laughs> Supposedly, they've they've always said that we do lose some some meat for harvesting with our hands and harvesting, you know, and and doing the doing the uh, uh, the the quartering. They've always said we do lose some. They've never gone into how much we lose, and honestly, I've never really noticed a huge loss. I've noticed a small loss, but I've never really used. You know, it's not like. It's not like you harvest them and suddenly instead of 40 kilos, you have 30 kilos. I think if it was that, it would be completely different. But this is like 5, 10, 15, 20. 
There's 25. That's basically 30. Yeah, we we don't we don't lose we don't lose very much at all. It's vi it's very small amount. I should put up some pics for my current long dark run. Been on a hiatus, but I've been gathering most of the supplies in the Forsaken Airfield. Oh Jesus Christ! The Forsaken Airfield hangar. Impressive amounts can be found on Voyager. Need to get back to it. Just finished signal void on the run. So all I need, uh, so I need to get all the corn over to the airfield. Oh, nice, very nice. Well, that that's that is that is cool, Rusty. I would love to see if you want to put some pictures up of that on Discord. That would be awesome to see. I officially, I got officially faithful cartographer recently. Oh, nice, Valor. That's awesome. That is awesome. And how you doing, Valor? Hello. You you need you need that. You need you need to get a wolf scare every once in a while. You need that in your life. No, you don't. I think it's been like four trips with the last three trips to the anger hangar. Carrying a full travoy of supplies. Wow. Wow. Night can't be far behind. I figured out exactly why this game is amazing to me and easy to return to. Why 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 is that why is that, Goldsman? I mean, I know I have my answer, but I like to hear. I like to hear what what draws people to this game and what draws other people to the game. I if I can drop any of this gear. I am doing great. I had an amazingly awesome weekend. I had an amazingly awesome weekend. Lots of fun. I think I can probably harvest those up before I go up. Game always keeps you on your toes. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, doesn't, it, it, it it'll. It again. It will. It'll lull you. This game will lull you into a false sense of security and then smack you in the head for not paying attention. The game gives you plenty of solid long-term goals, but it doesn't force you to do any one thing, and it feels. And everything feels like your own long-term goal. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 this game, this game plays very much like it, it. It plays, it plays as close to a life simulator as you can kind of get in a video game, in my opinion. Because there's nothing you have to do except survive, just live another day. However, you get to that goal is fine. And there's not, and there's multiple ways to get to that goal. There's no, like, one surefire way that this is the only meta of the game. If you do not do this, you will die. There's there's no, like, meta like that where you have to do things a certain way or you cannot succeed. Uh, you, you, you know, there's, you know, there there is, there is, like, a good way, there is, like, efficient ways to do things. I'll never deny that, but... I, you know, I've gone on interloper runs where I have not done my forge run till like day 30. I just go dink around in the zone for a while and have fun, collect gear, harvest up deer corpses, harvest up rabbit corpses, um, you know, and that sort of stuff. Make a summit run if I find a bedroll, you know. There's nothing saying you have to do anything. It's all up to you. The freedom in this game is just incredible. And yeah, it's it lets you figure out what it, you want to prioritize in, in your own run, um, and you don't have to do any of it. You can do all of it, some of it, none of it. Doesn't matter. It's not going to force you to do a damn thing. Let's just sleep for a couple seconds. 
<laughs> I'm 300 days into a run where I haven't even gone to three regions yet. Oh, yeah. That, that, that's the beauty of it, Zylocke. You can do that. Even with the DLC, you can choose to do what uh, to do the whole storyline or just enjoy yourself with in-depth cooking. Yep. That wind is starting to pick up. I have a feeling we're going to go to sleep and we're going to wake up in a blizzard. Yeah, the what? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, Zylonk. It's like, oh, he's putting a Travoy out. Okay, we we are gonna we are gonna cause a blizzard now because he's all prepared. He's all prepared. We aren't gonna do that. Oh, Goldsman, this game is built to a quality that so many games don't have any longer. There's the blizzard. Hey, but we got it. We got our food done. All right, let's give you guys night vision so you can see a little bit easier. I just think, I think the thing that keeps drawing me back to this game over and over is that the replayability is just very, there's a lot of replayability to the game. Um, and that doesn't really go away over time because, you know, it's not, it's even, even on Interloper, yeah, there's certain things you want to do, but... But there, it, it all depends on where you start, you know, where you spawn, what stuff you find, you know, right away versus what stuff you have to look around for. Um, yes, it is time to thank him for adding the sled. Yes. Thank you, Hinterland, for adding the sled. It's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. I lost all the guts from the bear because it took me day, three days to find the bugger. But it was my first bow kill with, of a bear. Yeah. Which is always satisfying. Yeah, I got bored of my 600-day stalker runs and tried tried to have a go at Interloper. Now I'm almost 250 days in. Nice. That is awesome. All right, so what we're going to do is move all that to our inventory. Pick that up. We cannot move, so we're going to drop most of the meat out here. Drop the small pieces over here. Yeah, we got like all the meat off that moose. Yeah, we. I. I, I don't. I don't even think we lost any. Um. I don't think we actually lost anything on that, as far as like ability to, like like as far as food goes. I don't think. I don't think we lost anything. We had five, four point seven kilo. No, we had nine 4.7 kilo bags which four four of those would be let's see four nine that's 36 plus we had point four point seven on each one of those yeah we we barely lost any meat at all barely any hey tala how you doing it gives players so many choices many of which are mandatory but you choose which mandatory thing you want to do yeah oh jesus christ Thank you, Cindy, for the 100 bits. I am safe indoors, but uh, yes, we uh, we had a little a little barky bark, a little barky bark, barky bark in the funky bunch there. Meeting's coming up in a minute. I'll mute the site, keep you up, but uh, uh, but you'll finish before I'm done. Take care, take care, Zylock. The Peach Bee. Hey, Peach Bee, how are you? Thank you for the raid and hi to Peach, Bee, Peach Bees viewers. How are you doing? We are currently mapping. We need to get out here and do a little mapping. A little mapping and yapping. But we just we just took down the moose. Oh, and I forgot to drop. Of course, I forgot to drop the moose hide and the guts. Being the big dummy that I am. I forgot to do that. No power in the verse can stop me. Hey, ca Cappy. Cappy Bar... 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 Barison? 
I probably said that really bad. Probably said that really bad, and I apologize. But I get to screw your name up. That's 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 the rules of the channel. I do get to screw your name up. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it, because I I suck at reading screen names. Um, but yes, we just we just killed the moose. What was Peach Cappy? Okay, that that makes it way easier. I can do Cappy all day long. So Peach B, what were we playing today? What what were we up to? Or I, I assume, I'm assuming. I'm assuming we were up to some long dark. Yes, some long dark. Open world's your thing. Open world's your thing, peace dog. And uh, plus ghost was an easy, easy one to platinum. Yeah, big old moose hide. We can we can stand on that while we're while we're working over here on the bench, and we can stand and do all of our stuff. Makes us feel good, feel good about ourselves. Uh, let's drop the guts underneath here. At least we got some more guts guts curing here. That's good. Yeah, I I, li I like the open world too. That that to me that to me is the most fun. Open world is always a blast. Um, yeah, let's go grab our. Yeah, it looks like we need to repair a few things up. We got the bear hide curing. Actually, we have two bear hides curing. Run, 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 run. We're running, 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 running. I don't know why I had those in there. Uh, excuse me. There we go. <laughs> I figure if we go, I go to make coffee, we get rated hay. That, that's just that's just what happens sometimes, Anora. You can we can never we can never plan for the raid. It just the raid happens when it happens. Good, we got some maples curing. We need those for another bow. What I should probably do is I probably should head back over to Cooks and the Foreman's Clear Cut. Well, the Foreman's Clear Cut, I, I gathered stuff there. Should probably head back over there and get our stuff and just sort of make the uh, the prison is a great like central base especially now that we have it open because now that we have it opened up we have this opened up uh so we can get the machine shop available to us which was great because we were able to we were able to get our knife and our hatchet back up to 100 percent and we can do it again if another aurora hits at night which is always fun Hey, Redis, how you doing? Do 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 do. Oh, is there is, actually is there charcoal in here? There is. Hello. I gave us a few more charcoal. That's nice. Um. Okay, let's go ahead and repair up our other undies. Our undies always seem to take a lot of damage. I don't know why. I mean, we've only been wearing them for 500 days. I mean, if, if you were wearing the same pair of underwear for, I don't know, a year and a half, almost two years, what would be the problem with that? Does the workshop have any other benefit on Loper except repairing your tools? Not really, no. I mean, it's a, it's a nice, it's a warm place where you can, where you can bring your gear and kind of sit. But other than that, it doesn't really have a benefit, no. And it does have lockers in it. So yeah, it does. It has lockers in it. It's got a place for you to store wood. Uh, dry, dry birch maple, uh, that sort of stuff. You can break down a couple. You can break the crates down in here. You can, uh, you can take apart the hat, the, uh, the, the hand carts in here, which is always nice. And get a little bit more metal to repair your stuff. I'm gonna repair that one more time because why not? I love this track. 
This is what this is one of the newer tracks. Newer as in it, it wasn't in the old, the old TLD playlist. Also, how do you deal with running out of whetstones? What would be the main plan in case? Because I don't want to lose hatch in case a wolf hits me. The main, the main, the main thing you do to run it. Well, you you will you will run out of whetstones. That's just inevitable. It's always going to happen. You can't do anything to stop it. Uh, either come here to the machine shop. You either want to go machine shop or you want to go to Bleak Inlet and go to the cannery. Because with the use of the milling machine, well, we can't do it now. But when the Aurora hits, with the milling machine and one, the milling machine and one piece of metal will take a knife or a hatchet or a hacksaw, a gun or a pistol, and take it from zero. Well, basically take it from any percentage to 100%. Um, so you'll be able to get to 100% off of one piece of metal on your hatchet or your knife. Uh, other than that, the main thing I do late in the game, Elcor, and that what I've already done is I've done a second forge run where I made knives and hatchets. I left, I believe, an extra knife and hatchet in the coastal highway, if I remember right. And I know I left an extra knife and a hatchet at the Carter Hydro Dam. And so you start scattering knives and hatchets around the world so that you can go back and gather them up later. But that's that's pretty much the only way to long term. You just have to make more. Yeah, so getting set up in a workshop in a region is a great idea. And honestly, between the two, I personally like this workshop better. Now, the workshop in Bleak Inlet, the advantage it has is that the... Because this one, the workbench is outdoors, so you have to make a fire over there to craft at it. So the one in Bleak Inlet has the advantage that the workbench is inside the workshop um, that has the milling machine. So there's pluses and minuses. I find food a little bit scarcer in Bleak Inlet than it is here in um, Broken Ra uh, in Black Rock. I find food to be a little more plentiful here in Black Rock than it is in Bleak Inlet myself. But that's just you know that's my personal that's my personal uh, you know take on it. But you know a second a second um, a second uh, uh, a forge run is always nice as well because you can set up a you can set up a a, a, a you know for a a second run of making arrowheads as well as tools so you can do the tools and the arrowheads all at the same time Yeah, the nice the nice thing is you never really you never run out of birch and maple goldsmen because you can always get those back on beachcombing. And actually cloth and metal you can never run out of because you can get that beachcombing as well. Uh, cloth you can either get actual raw pieces of cloth or you can get clothing that has cloth in it. Technically you can't even run out of leather because you can always find beachcombing wise you can find uh, driving gloves. Driving gloves will wash up every once in a while. So you can't even te you can't even technically run out of leather, um, and metal will wash up every once in a while as well when you beach comb. Um, I've I've never got I've never got matches or um, I've never got matches or uh, whetstones beach combing, and maybe somebody maybe somebody has, but I never have got those myself. Um, they've made, be, you know, honestly, they've made beachcombing a little less risky these days. Beachcombing's not as bad as it used to be. Uh, a, a lot of the stuff that they've put, they've put down when you beachcomb is up on, like, safe areas now, which is weird. You don't have to fight, you don't have to, oh, it, see, it erased all those cattails there. I hate that. I absolutely hate that it erases those once you pick them up. How many matches do I still have? Well, on me, 
currently, I have 36, 38. I got 47 matches on me. Plus, I have about a hundred and some matches Can't feel my uh, back in... I got, I got like about a hundred matches stashed throughout the world as well. Hey, Shadow in the Light, welcome back. Yeah, I got about a hundred matches stashed throughout the world uh, as well. Mrs. Honeypot going for dinner? Say hi to Mr. Lemon Tree for us. Warm hugs to you and him. I hope you're having I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Go watch a good movie. Get some snuggle get some snuggly wugglies in. You you really I mean the biggest key to preserving matches is preserving them early is is not well the biggest key is not worrying about them. Um don't get too concerned early game about using matches to light that first fire. You'll probably waste two or three matches to do it. Uh, do you think those matches will be enough for 100 days? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because right now, if I wanted to start a fire, i just put one down. If I if I want to start a fire, i just put one down. Go to my mag lens. Boom, I got a fire. You, you Basically, later in the game, you always, always, always want to check that mag lens first. And if the mag lens doesn't work, um, you can sometimes use the fire striker. If the fire striker doesn't work, you always can light a torch. And especially, remember, in in inter you know, it, once you get to fire making five, you start a fire no matter what with one match 100% of the time. So you're 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 not at that point. You don't even need torches to start fires anymore. It's just you got to remember after that first fire, after you light that first fire with matches, you should never, ever, ever, ever use a match to light a fire ever again. You should always light a torch, then light the fire. That, that should always be your mo mode of operation after that first fire that you've lit. Um, because otherwise you're just wasting matches. Or you have the possibility until you get to fire making five. Once you get fire making five, feel free to light fires with just a match. It don't matter anymore, because now you have now you have the one hundred percent chance of making a fire. Because I I could just I could just light a fire right here with a match, a match and a piece of cedar or a stick. You have a hundred percent chance of lighting it. Or of course a uh, you know a book does that as well. But with a cedar or a stick, you have a 100% chance with a single match. So, after that first fire in a game, you should never, ever light another fire with just a match until you reach level five. Once you've reached level, once you've reached level five, no problem. Light it, you can light them with five matches, no problem at all. But uh, yeah, the, the 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 torch torch lighting is the biggest trick to conserve those matches. And yeah, I I should. And, and also, much like the use of the bow and arrow, the further you get into the game, the less you're lighting fires. You're lighting fires on a couple of occasions where early in the game, it seems like you're lighting fires all the time. You're lighting fires to make, make, a, you know, make a fire to cook some rabbit or making a fire to cook some water, making a fire to stay warm, making a fire to harvest a deer, making a fire, you know, you're making fires all the time. Just, you can sometimes make multiple fires in a day where later in the game you've got you've got food stored you got water stored you got you got all that stuff um you you have you have not as much need to make the fire as you do in the early game uh the question isn't really game related oh that's that's okay uh am i canadian no i am not canadian i actually live down in oregon which is a is a state one state away from canada Ooh, that sneeze came out of nowhere. But yeah, I live down in Oregon. I, 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 I live down in Oregon. I'm not I'm not technically Canadian, no. Although a few Canadians have said they adopted me. I do I do have I do have three trees that Hinterland donated in my name in Canada. So I own a piece of Canada. There's there's oh five trees. There's five trees in Canada's forests. That were planted in honor of me, and 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 I even have I even have I even have the coordinates to it. I could I could look up the coordinates if I wanted to. So I, I do have I do own I do have five trees up in Canada that were 
planted in my name. So I, I, I have, it's sort of like, it's sort of like, uh, you know, you can, you can become a lord or a lady of Scotland. You know, you can get a foot by, you know, you know, get, buy a little foot acre and become a lord or lady. It's sort of like that. I'm kind of like a lord or lady of Canada. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Canada has lords or ladies, but you know. Your your hat made me made you assume. Well, this this was knitted for me by one of my viewers, Shadow in the Light. It actually has the Canadian toque on the front, and then it has the bear. It has a bear on the back with little uh, sticks around him, and she uh, she knitted that for me because it's very. It's very uh, uh, reminiscent of what of of the the two the wool toque that's in the game. Um, so um, there you go. So you can keep an eye on your trees using Google Earth. Possibly, I possibly could. I mean, I could probably type. I mean, it has the coordinates on it. I could ju I could type those in and probably see it. I doubt they're very big. This was done. Well, this was done when Crossroads Elegy came out, which was what. Crossroads Elegy was 2019, I think, 2019. So those trees have only been planted for about five years. But yes, one of my one of my viewers is a witty knitter. Lynette is a witty knitter, and she made that for me, so that was cool. Um, okay, so we want to... I want to move out this direction... Oh, stop puffing and puffing, Will. You're fine. Yes, I have some very creative audience members, Shadow in the Light. Uh, one of my audience members, well, Rusty, who's in chat right now on the YouTube, on the Twitch side, made me my own Jackrabbit thermos. My own Jackrabbit uh, 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 thermos and sent it to me. Another, another viewer uh, painted me my own, my own long dark, my own long dark, uh, a uh, painting, which was pretty, which was pretty cool of Justin to do that. Uh, Hinterland actually sent me one of their little cool tin mugs, which was cool. So yes, I, I have some very, very talented people, some very talented, talented audience members that are super cool, and have sent me some really neat things. Some really neat things. You think I should visit those trees? I think those trees are quite a ways up there, though. I don't know. I don't know if I can get up there to visit him, Alexander. That's if that's if Canada would let me in. Canada, Canada will be like, yeah, you can't come into our country. Those trees are like my distinct my distinct children. Those trees are probably out west. I wanted to get up here. Let's see if I can get a Hadrian moment, boys and girls. Can we get the Hadrian moment? Oh, look at that. There's the Hadrian moment right there. Look at that. The prison. And we're going to take a little picture of that. We got the prison. Actually, there's probably a good place to map, too. Oh yeah, look, look, oh yeah, look at that map. There's actually a supply bin there. Interesting. Oh jeez. Oh god, I thought I was I That scared my heart just took a little skip there. I'm here. I'm hearing the uh, ptarmigans that are all the way over there. I just looked it up. Your state is five thousand two hundred eight miles away from you. Oh wow, <laughs> that is quite the ways. That's quite a ways away.
Shark Fin Mountain, yes. You would you would watch me live you would watch me vis live stream visiting my trees. Be like, here's my hinterland trees. Maybe one day, maybe one day I will. Maybe one day I'll go visit go visit me trees. It's getting dark out here. Time to look for shelter. It is getting dark and I'm pretty tired. I think we're going to head back. I think we're going to head back into the... Into the main area here. You know, I think I might actually sleep. I might... I, I, you know, I'm going to sleep in this cave. We're going to sleep in the cave because that'll give us outdoor time. Which, we've gotten a lot of outdoor time on this run anyway. But I just don't want to have to fight cabin fever and everything else. So yeah, I'm a little I'm a little ways away from you, Shadow. Just tiny tiny bit away. Like what is that a fifth of the, fifth of the circumference of the earth, something like that? Twenty-four thousand miles. So yeah, it's about a it's about a fifth. It's about a fifth. That's about the yeah. That's about a fifth. Yeah, something like that. It's like something is sapping my energy. Have you ever been to any country overseas? No, I have not. I've never. The only the only country outside the U.S. Well, the only two countries outside the U.S. I've ever visited were Canada and Mexico. Well, I guess I guess one time our ship, the cruise ship I was on, they they. They uh, they docked in Venezuela, but they recommended we don't get off the boat. Other than with a tour group. <laughs> they recommended that unless we were getting off the boat with a tour group, we should not leave. So I went, yeah, I, I'm, good. I'm good staying on the boat. I'm good. I stayed on the boat the entire time that I was in that we were in Venezuela. Maybe put a trail a trail camera attached to your trees, document the journey. But no, I've I've not been overseas. I don't know if I'll I i do not know if I'll ever be overseas. I, I I'm not sure if that's ever gonna be not sure if that's ever gonna be something I do in my lifetime. It'd be kind of interesting to do. I, I you know, I, I'm not against it by any by any stretch, but I don't know if I'll ever be ever be doing that. Is it an Aurora out tonight? It is an Aurora. Well, look at that. That's pretty. There's no noise. That's kind of weird. Well, I guess it is almost daylight, so usually the Aurora noises die down when the sun comes up. All right. Let's go back to the prison, grab some food. We're going to head back. We're going to head. Actually, I want to go up here and see if I can map up there. But we're going to go back to the prison, grab some food. And then we're going to kind of come down to this area and do a little more mapping. Do a little more yapping and mapping. But I need to get a little food in me. Looks get a little like food in my gone. belly. Excuse me. Stop jumping. Stop jumping, bud. Change the subject. Have you seen the movie Madam Web? No. <laughs> no, I, 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 I decided to not, not go see a Spider-Man movie that didn't have Spider-Man in it. But no, I have not seen Madam Web. Did you did you go check out Madam Web? And if you did, what'd you think? Good or bad, doesn't matter. I I mean, honestly, I just wasn't interested in seeing a origin story for a side character in Spider-Man that was not really that great of a side character ever anyway. You enjoyed it? Nice. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Germany has some nice places, and the Netherlands are also really nice. Just some recommendations if you travel overseas. 
Well, Mrs. Honeypot actually lives with her husband in Germany as well. She actually lives with her husband, hub, hubby over in Germany. Well, that's good, Tylee. I'm glad, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I didn't even realize it was still even out in theaters. And I thought I was the only Ger German. To be honest, to be honest, oh, you rented it on YouTube, okay. To be honest, I'm just kind of, I'm kind of bored of the superhero stuff anymore. And this is coming from a guy who owns over 9,000 comic books. I'm just kind of bored of the superhero movies. They they just don't they don't interest me that much any longer. They're not very they they just aren't very. I, I want to see I want to see Spider Man, the X Men, um, um, you know, Iron Man, Thor, and they don't have any of those guys anymore. They 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 just they're trying to push all these characters that are that that are basically not even d-list characters they're like z-list characters and it's just like it's just like the, and, and i understand why they're doing it and you might think oh it's because because he's against the politics or something it's like no they're doing it because they own it because marvel does not and disney in general marvel and disney want to push characters and even sony does they want to push the characters that they own all the rights to that they don't have to pay residuals to people on and there are residuals they have to pay for a lot of the characters that they don't wholly own. And characters like Madam Web, characters like Ms. Marvel, and those, they wholly own those characters because honestly, nobody cares about them. And that's the problem is that nobody cares about them and nobody wants them. That's why they own all the rights to them is because they're not really good characters. And so, but I understand why they want to push those because any money they can make from them, that's money that they get in their pot without having to share it with a creator or a, you know, or somebody who, who wrote the character originally. Um, and, and so, you know, for them, from a business standpoint, it's a smart thing to do for them because they get to, they get, you know, whatever pot they get, they get, they get all of it. And, and Dis Disney, Disney is over, overall, Disney does not like giving residuals to people at all for properties they they just are very very against that so i get it why they're doing it i mean it's totally it totally makes sense from a business standpoint unfortunately the problem with it is that most of the most of, a lot of those characters are not the those aren't the a-list or even b-list characters because because honestly here's the here's the honest to god's truth iron man uh uh daredevil Captain America, they are more, I mean, in the Marvel universe, Spider-Man is the is is like the A-list character. Um, the X-Men, like the core X-Men characters are like A-list characters. Um, which is why they were the easy ones for Marvel. When Marvel Marvel in the late 90s went bankrupt, they actually went public with their stock and it failed. And they had to sell off a lot of the rights to their stuff. Well, of course, the properties they were able to sell off, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, X-Men, those were their hot properties. Nobody wanted to buy Iron Man, Thor, The Incredible Hulk, uh, um, Hawkeye, Black Widow. Those characters were not, they were not as popular, and so they weren't easy to sell off. So that's why... When Disney bought Marvel, they got all those characters because those were characters that Marvel had never been able to sell off in, in the general marketplace to pay for its debts. They were able to sell off the X-Men and Spider-Man and all that stuff. And so that's what Marvel, that's what Disney Marvel's always struggled with, is making their, making the lesser Marvel characters into more. And they did a really good job with that with the Avengers because they took their time and built up Iron Man and Thor and Captain America through their own movies. Um, they built them up through their own movies to a point where they were able to put them, 
where they were able to put them together in the Avengers and make it something. And the thing is, though, that they kind of, they, they ran through the more popular of the less, the more popular of the less popular characters, which sounds really weird, but they sort of ran through the more popular of the less popular characters. And so now all they have is like characters that really nobody's that excited about. That, 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 some of them were fine side characters. I mean, honestly, Hawkeye has never been a popular character. Hawkeye has been in, I mean, in the comic books, Hawkeye's been in several teams. They did, I think they did like one miniseries with Hawkeye that went over moderately okay. But a Hawkeye has always been a C or D list character. He was just a, he was basically Marvel's answer to the Green Era. He was like Marvel's version of the Green Era. Um, and he was never like that popular or anything. Heard Spider-Man had to like the stream. <laughs> you know, but Spider-Man, I mean, Spider-Man is an A-list character. Unfor and, and there's a lot of Spider-Man's rogue gallery. There's a lot of Spider-Man kind of allies. You look at, you look at the allies Spider-Man has surrounded himself with over the years. Characters like Black Cat, characters like the Punisher, Kraven the Hunter. Um, I don't even count Morbius really as a Spider-Man ally, but Madam Web has always been one. Um, you know, there, there's there's always Spider-Man has always had characters that have orbited him, and some of them, like the Punisher, have become rather big in their own right. Um, especially with the onset, you know. The whole anti-hero thing got really big back in the mid-90s. That became kind of a big thing. And so Punisher really became big. But, like, Kraven the Hunter was always, like, a big Spider-Man bad guy. In fact, that's one of the biggest series of Spider-Man I ever enjoyed was the Kraven's Last Hunt. And I have the, that's the promotional poster from it. It carried over through Spectacular, Web of Spider-Man, and Amazing Spider-Man. It was a six-part miniseries of Craven's Last Hunt. It was an amazing story. Um, but they've always, those have always been like sub-characters in the Spider-Man universe. And what Sony has been trying to do is Sony has been trying to make a like Spider-Verse with Madam Web and Morbius and Venom and, and all this. And, and most of them, honestly, most of them have fallen flat on their face because what they fail to realize, or maybe they're just trying to make their own reality, is that the reason those characters are interesting is because they're with Spider-Man. They, 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 don't, they don't have a lot of... They don't have a lot of gravitas on their own. They're interesting because they're tied with the Spider-Man name and the Spider-Man brand and the Spider-Man, you know, story. Venom is Venom to me is not very interesting without Spider-Man. Um, he just isn't. Um, uh, Craven Craven is not that interesting without Spider-Man. Black uh, 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 the uh, uh, Madam Web is not that interesting without Spider-Man. Um, you know, it's, it's just, there, there, there's there's certain characters that are supposed to be, they're called supporting characters. And they're supporting characters because they support the main character. <laughs> I mean, it's just, yeah. You know, it's just it's just like, that's that's what it is. There's they're supporting characters and there's main characters. And... And you can try to force those, you could try to force those main, those supporting characters into main character roles, but there's a reason they've been supporting characters for so long. It's because they they help the main character along. It's sort of like it's sort of like if they came out with a Pepper Potts movie. It would probably tank because she's a supporting character of Iron Man. Well, that's, you know, Elcor they are. I mean, my son and I talked a bunch about that when we came back 
when we were doing the game convention, we were talking a little bit about Star Wars because both of us are old. My son is a fan of prequel Star Wars and, of course, the OT, but he likes the prequels a lot because that's what he grew up with. I'm a fan of the OT. The prequels, now with what they have out, the prequels look way better than they ever have, but I like the, I like the OT the best. Neither of us like the sequels, but we were talking about, you know, the, the newer Star Wars stuff and, you know, talking about how Andor actually felt like a complete series, whereas things like Obi-Wan and, um, and, uh, uh, Ahsoka were more, they, they felt more like movies that they had basically divvied up into eight episodes, added some filler content to, and went, well, we now have a series, yay! Um, you know, because they weren't very well put together. They, in fact, they kind of sucked. Uh, but hi, Janelle. How you doing? How you doing? How's it going? But yeah, I mean, but a lot of that Elcor comes from the streaming part as well. Because a lot of, a lot of companies, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of companies wanted to start their own streaming services. Which was like, it was like a great, it was like a great time to start a streaming service during the pandemic because everybody was stuck at home. You know, nobody had anything they could do. They, you know, and so a lot of streaming services went, oh, look, we got all these subscribers. And it's like, yeah, but you know, once people get back to work and stuff, those subscribers are gonna go away. You know, it's it's an unsustainable model to have that many subscription services. The, the attraction of the subscription service was, hey, I can dump my $100 cable bill and get most of the stuff I want to watch on Hulu and Netflix for 20, 25 bucks or whatever it is, you know, or 20 bucks. Damn, I'm freezing. And now it's getting to the point where the subscription services are so damn expensive, you know, um, when you combine them all together, they're so damn expensive that it's almost cheaper to go back to cable now. Or what most people do is they just dump a couple of the streaming services and they just go with a you know i watch this streaming service for a month and then i go to this streaming service watch it for a month and then i rotate to this one and kind of go back and forth between them i'm not going to keep them all going at once now of course amazon kind of has a leg up on all of them because amazon has the you know they they, they offer the streaming services along with their Amazon Prime, you know, service as well. And so a lot of people take take advantage of that. And they're like, well, I've already got Amazon Prime, so I might as well just use it to, you know, have the streaming service as well. Well, yeah, exactly. That's the thing is like, people have gotten smarter. And the thing is that Disney looks failing to me, except for new Deadpool. Oh yeah, Disney's failing. D Disney, Disney, uh, Serena is, is, is in a lot of trouble. Disney, Disney needs to get back to its core, which is making good family entertainment that entertains a majority of families. The whole inclusive thing is is nice and sounds great, but what they don't, what they've started to realize is yes, you need to be inclusive, you you need to do that sort of stuff, but when you make it all about that, people get tired of it really quick. Just like people will get tired of, you know, people proselytizing their religion on them all the time. You know, people get tired of it when it's just pushed in their face all the time. It doesn't work. It, it turns people off. When you, put the, when you put the message before the product, you're going to probably fail because you're, you're dividing people when you do that. When you, when you put a product out there that's good and then you put a little bit of a kernel of a message in it here or there people don't care and that's been done for years star trek did that star trek next generation did that for years and nobody gave a crap because the the story that wrapped everything together was good the stories and the 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 intelligence of the characters was always good and it wasn't being done for some here. sort of message or some sort of reason. It was being done to have good stories and interesting science fiction. 
and and they need to get back to that and i don't know i don't know if they're going to because unfortunately for disney they are now their company has been infiltrated and rather taken over by activists which is not good on any front for any any company whether it's activists on one side or the other it's not a good thing well hello Well, you know, the thing is, Elcor, that a lot of the stuff that Disney is putting out these days, and a lot of companies are putting out these days, seems very packaged. It seems very packaged and very formulaic. There doesn't, there doesn't, the creativity is not there. The creativity isn't there like it used to be. I think a lot of that is nobody's willing to take chances. Nobody, nobody's willing to take chances anymore these days, which is kind of sad. Oh, okay, so they all ran. They were too scared of me. They got too scared of me, my friends. They dipped because they're like, Athenon is too scary. We do not want to deal with him. Some gear. The Mandalorian was an interesting thing in the beginning. I like the premise of the Mandalorian. The problem with the Mandalorian, and I know a lot of people are going to hate me to, for saying this, the problem with the Mandalorian is that is that Baby Yoda became super, super popular and became a meme and became what the show was all about. I have a feeling that the, Mandal that the whole Baby Yoda story was not supposed to go the way it, it did. I, I have a feeling that the initial, I have a feeling that that changed when Baby Yoda became as big as it did, that changed the whole ship. I do think that probably the first two seasons, well, the first season was interesting from the standpoint that I like the idea of a bounty high. I, I just want to see Mandalorian like, kicking butt and taking names, you know, just being a Mandalorian bounty hunter. I thought that was a really interesting, cool premise. Then Baby Yoda got involved and it just kind of all went to crap. Um, I think they had some interesting ideas in it. The second season of Mandalorian was basically, you know, guest star of the week to promote, you know, other series that we want to have come out. And, you know, and that's what it was. They wanted to have a, a Bo-Katan series. They want to have a Soka series. They want to have a. They want to have. They want to. They wanted to basically, you know, basically have. Oh, remember this? Remember it was all member berry stuff, and it was like, remember this guy? Remember this guy? Remember Boba Fett? Remember Ahsoka? Remember this? We're gonna bring these guys all out. We're gonna have. We're gonna have a whole Star Wars Star Wars universe of series going on. Yay! Well, Boba Fett was a joke. The Boba Fett series was an absolute joke and a travesty. Oh, that's fabulous. That is fabulous news. If I could take any IP and make my own movie with it, what would I use? Oh, I would do... I would, I would totally do Star Wars. Yeah, I, I, lo I loved I loved the uh, premise of the Mandalorian. I just want I mean I thought it was a cool idea to show the post Empire disarray that would come because there wouldn't be like this unifying rebellion that just happened to take over everything and rule everything. There'd be a lot of chaos, and there'd be a need for like bounty hunters to bring in, you know, uh, uh, you know fugitive uh, empire guys the mandalorian could be used for that i thought it was going to be a cool sort of like almost like uh almost like uh um 
like the wild like like an old western you know where the mando shows up in a in a city you know that's got some troubles and he's got to, he's got to solve their troubles and and he rides into town on his on his spaceship and and then just just as just as he wrote you know he comes in cleans up the town and rides out again and goes turns in a bounty it's like that would be that, that was that was like oh that, that's kind of a cool premise i want to see that like a like a western in space basically almost almost kind of like a la firefly in a way almost like almost like firefly in a way in a sense that i thought that would be really super cool but you know, Grogu got go Grogu got all big, and you know everybody like everybody like Baby Yoda. Baby not Baby, no, it's not Yoda. All right, bye, Talia. Have fun in Conan. Conan is calling you. Conan is always calling you, Talia. Let's just be honest. Conan's calling. Yeah, Grogu. I heard the name and I was like, really? That sounds like that sounds like a name that's that, that sounds like a fanfic name. That sounds like some 15-year-old written fanfic that came up with the name Grogu. I was like, yeah. I mean, I'm not against puppets or anything, but. It's like, you know, I mean, heck, one of my favorite shows is Firefly. Or is, uh, is Farscape, I mean. Speaking of westerns, have you watched 1883? No. Isn't that the one that's like a takeoff from Yellowstone or something? I've not watched Yellowstone either, so. And then Mando Season 3 was basically... Yeah, Mando is not going to be important anymore. It's all going to be about Bo-Katan going forward. And basically, Mando, Mandalorian basically stood around doing nothing for the most part. And Bo-Katan was the hero of the story. Which is kind of, it's kind of par for the course with Disney. I mean, you know. My dad never let me allow me to and my sister watch superhero movies, and we were also mad at him at the time. But uh, but about it, uh, about it. But he, then again, I did watch Pulp Fiction with him when, with him when I was twelve. Pulp Fiction's a good movie. Pulp Fiction's freaking awesome. <laughs> it is very cold again. But luckily, we're inside the uh, we're inside the roadhouse here, so. Oh no, tears are falling. Spaceballs the lunchbox, Spaceballs the flamethrower. Yes, not too shabby. Spaceballs the lunchbox, Spaceballs the flamethrower. Moichandising, moichandising, moichandising. That's where the real money from the movie's made. We put the name on everything. We put baby Grogu on everything. Just cuz. <laughs> Just cuz. Yeah, I got real sick of baby Grogu real fast. <laughs> Now here's something you may not know. This pack is getting too heavy to carry. If you fix this radio tower here in this zone, you can actually get signals from your radio that'll show you where hidden caches are. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, and for me right now, it's more... I was, tell, I was telling my son, you know, for me right now, it's not even that I'm mad about Star Wars or anything. I'm just kind of apathetic to it. Which, honestly, is the worst thing that can happen to him. Because, like, this new series they have coming out, the Acolyte series, nobody's going to watch it. 
nobody, hardly anybody cares anymore. There is no buzz around it except for the laughter at how ridiculous it looks. The, the laughter at how ridiculous the ac acolyte w looks. And that and that's all I've seen online is just people kind of kind of like laughing about yeah it looks like another another goofy Disney project that's gonna be just go just gorgeously stupid. 1883 is a prequel to Yellowstone, but you don't need to watch Yellowstone to get 1883. Well, but that's on uh, what channel is that on? That's on like CBS or one of the streaming. I don't have that streaming service, so I can't watch it. I can't watch Yellowstone or that. I believe. I think that's on Peacock or something. I don't know. I, I just don't care enough. Maybe one day I'll, I'll get Peacock going, but yeah, I just, I don't have it, so. It's on Paramount Plus, okay. Gotcha. So tonight we'll have an Aurora, boys and girls. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I think Paramount Plus will get bought out at some point. I'll just I'll wait Ari until Paramount Plus gets bought out, or they just start licensing the rights to their shows again to Netflix, because that's going to happen eventually. In in about four or five years, there's going to be maybe maybe four at most, maybe four major streaming services again. Amazon will Amazon will definitely be one probably Netflix will definitely be one Amazon might be one if they don't give up on it and I don't know who the other two are but I don't think I don't think Disney streaming service Disney streaming service will probably be there but there's probably not going to be it's not there's not going to be a lot of it going around there's not going to be a lot of their streaming service happening because honestly people just don't care about it They've been losing subscribers month over month and year over year ever since the pandemic ended. So that's an unsustainable business model. I get why everybody wanted a streaming service, but it's not sustainable in the long run. It gives them a nice steady like income, but unfortunately for them, it depends on people having way more money. Um, it works when it's an up economy. People have lots of excess money to spend. But when people don't have all that excess money to spend and they're cutting back, the first thing they're going to do is look through their streaming services and go, yeah, we can't afford this, 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 this. And they're just going to be cutting back to the, you know, bare bones. That's what I did. That's what I did. I cut, I cut out, I cut out most of the streaming services I got. I have Netflix and, um, of course I have Prime because I, I have Prime shipping. But, um, and then I also have right now, I have, what's the other one I have? It's the one that has Survivor and, uh, uh, The Amazing Race on it. Cause I like those shows that I just want to, I wanted to watch them. And it's like five bucks a month. I'm like, okay, I'm paying five bucks a month to watch, watch Amazing Race and Survivor. And then once those are over, I'll cancel until the next season. It makes no difference to me. You're gonna about to cut Netflix. What they offer you to watch is dismal. Yeah, see, I like I like a lot of the Korean dramas, so I watch a lot of those. <laughs> oh, there's three of those wolves over there. Interesting. I wonder if I carry a little bit of meat. Oh, there's four of them over there now. Interesting. Oh, no, I have the bug. Yep, I have the bug. Hold on. I got to zone in, log in, log out. How big is Amazon in the U.S. here in the EU? Amazon is just more expensive version of eBay. Oh, Amazon's huge here. Amazon is humongous here, Elcor. It's, it's, way, it's way better than eBay here. Amazon is humongous. That should fix my bug. There we go. Oh, 
I want to draw these guys over here because if I can draw them over here, they get stuck. They can't come up these stairs. So I don't even have to light a fire if I can draw them over here. Actually, if I can sneak them before they even... If I can get them before they even get to me. Something's gotta go. Hi guys, how you doing? Oh, wow. There we go. <laughs> I had a funny, awesome merch idea. A big coffee cup with the words, everything is fine on it. And showing the moose charging or stomping. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's 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 all okay. We're under control. We need a big coffee cup. Unfortunately, the size of the cups they give me, I don't really have a lot of control over. I, w I wish I I I'd like to find some place that would give me like a big coffee cup that I could do. I know I shot another arrow down here. There it is. The Timbies losing their crap's always fun. Netflix offers the same things over and over to watch many of them I've already seen. Yeah, that, and that's the thing is like the streaming service. Unfortunately for Netflix, when the whole streaming service thing like started becoming a big deal, Netflix lost like tons of their stuff, tons of their stuff that everybody liked watching from them. And so Netflix, unfortunately, was the was the victim of of losing a lot of things. And so, you know, all these companies, the WB, Warner Brothers, whatever, whatever it was, Disney, they had so many shows on Netflix for so long and they pulled them all. And unfortunately, that just kind of killed them. That, that kind of killed Netflix. That's why they started, like, outsourcing a lot of their stuff to the Korean television shows and stuff like that because they were like, well... Nobody can steal those from us. We'll just we'll just make them ourselves. Oh yeah, Netflix stocks fell a lot as well. Yeah, because they lost well they lost all that stuff. I mean they lost the ability to to have all that all that stuff there, and so for them that was that was a huge blow for them. Um, now they've slowly come back over time. I think also the other big thing that a lot of companies made a mistake with, and I think. I think Amazon is realizing this now is this whole idea of producing your producing your own content. A la a la the 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 rangs of power. I don't, I don't even I don't even call it lord of a oh lord of it. It's just the rangs of power. Uh which was which has been a colossal flop on on Amazon's part no matter what no matter how Amazon wants to spin it. Rangs of power has been a huge flop for them. They they needed so they needed to generate so much buzz with that show that you know it, it just it just has not been a good thing for. Them. And and I think like somebody was saying earlier in, in 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 the in the comments, you know, a lot of these companies have just started like they've more just turned out they've turned into they just want to put content out there instead of actually making good shows. 
It's just about putting content out to have on their channel. They don't really care if the show's good or not. They're just like, well, let's put another Star Wars thing out. Let's put another blah, blah, blah out. Let's put, a, let's put another one of these out. Let's just get something else, get something else out there for the people to watch, you know? We can't, we can't have dead content. We can't have a channel with dead content. We need, we need content on the channel, you know? And I think, I think that's the biggest problem they've had is that a lot of them are just churning out garbage that, you know, if those were television shows that were actually like back in the 80s and 90s had to be put on syndicated TV, they would never have made it past even a first season. They probably would have been canceled halfway through their first season because they're such garbage. I need to drop something. No, you don't. You know, it's bad when I'd rather watch I Love Lucy than new Star Wars. Well, I Love Lucy, at least it was funny. I, L I Love Lucy was actually, like, an interesting show. It had some humor. And it had Ricky Ricardo on it. So cold. Just don't down but you know, there was no diversity back then, Genie Girl. There was no strides being made for diversity back then. <laughs> Diversity only started happening in 2016. That, that only started happening in 2016. <laughs> as, as the actor who played Ricky Ricardo and, I don't know, the gal who played O'Hara, uh, Michelle Nichols, um, uh, you know, just forget about them. That, that, wasn't, that wasn't real. That wasn't real change happening. <laughs> I think that's one thing I just think is so hilarious is like it seems like it seems like a lot of younger people today have forgotten of about basically they just kind of ignore anything that happened before they were born never actually happened. You know, it, it's like it's like time did not exist before their before their awakening of consciousness. It's like you realize things were going on back then. Think, think, things were going on back then that were groundbreaking and that were huge and that people applauded because, you know, and that even, it, took, it you know, it shocked people back then, you know? It's like stuff was happening back in the 60s and the 70s. That's when the stuff really started to happen. They're standing on the shoulders of people that actually had to fight and actually had to die. To get things changed, so they can go on Twitter and 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 whine about how bad they have life, while they're using the. They can go on Twitter on their iPhone from their air conditioned house where they're watching a show on a big screen television and complain about how horrible the world is and how inequitable it's been to them. <laughs> Which I'm just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Okie dokie. What if I can drop any of this gear? Uh, it just it makes me go. Oh, you poor little you poor little snowflake. <laughs> while eating food, yeah, they, while eating food that they had delivered. Yep. <laughs> Maybe you also want to tell us that the Earth is a globe. <laughs> The Earth, the Earth is round. The Earth is a globe, Victorian. It is. It is a globe, as a matter of fact. It's a very big globe. Why, why is I so cold? And why is there a fog? You know how hard this fog makes it for me to map things? Game, game. Let me tell, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Lucy? Lucy, let me tell you something. I miss when people said dumb things. You could just... Yeah, and you could be like, you're a dumbass. Yes, exactly. Oh, it's coming back, Genie Girl. It's making it's making its rounds again. It's it, People... Uh, let's just put it this way. People are up to here with the, the shenanigans that have been going on for the last five or six years. That people, you know... Uh, you, you know, it, it's it's it, it's an interesting look at things because it shows how 
tolerant people are that for the last five or six years, people have just been kind of like, okay, we'll let them say these goofy things. We'll let them get away with some goofy stuff. We won't criticize them for it because, you know, we, we want them to feel like that, you know, their voices are being heard. But the time is rapidly approaching. And I think in a lot of ways, it's already here where people are just kind of fed up with the shenanigans, you know? It's 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 the it's the old it's the old f around and find out type type scenario, um, and people are kind of tired of the shenanigans and and you're seeing the pushback begin. You're seeing it in the sense the that the that people me. are not being canceled left and right by the small vocal minority anymore. People are actually standing up for them and going, they did nothing wrong. Um, and and the other thing the other thing you're seeing and thank you for the follow there, Rick. I appreciate that. The thing that you're seeing, the first step, is that the comedians are now making fun of it. And you know things are starting to change when the comedians are finally fed up with it. And, and they're making fun of the BS that's been going on for the last four or five years. So the comedians are now guys like Dave Chappelle. And these are comedians who are not by any stretch, you know, you'd say, you know, it, it'd be conservatives that are stomping it down. But these are comedians that that are very... You know, comedians as a general rule, comedians generally be tend to be more left of center than right of center, I'd say. There are some, you know, Jeff Foxworthy is probably more right of center than left, I would, I just guess. I mean, but, you know, guys like Dave Chappelle, um, I don't think he's a, I don't think he's a, 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 a diehard Republican or anything by any stretch of the imagination. And neither is Bill Maher. But you know when they start speaking up about stuff and making fun of it, and kind of you know kind of poking poking the bear, that's where the change starts to happen, because those guys are basically going, yeah, this is kind of BS, you know, and then other people start chiming in, and and so you're you're seeing that start now, and I think in two or three years we might get back to some semblance of normalcy, some semblance of people not putting up with the BS as much. It takes a while. We didn't get here in a day. We won't get out of it in a day. But it's nice to see us progressing towards that towards that goal. <laughs> Hi, if I don't recover my cartridge after shooting a wolf, can I recover them in the, the after or the snow will come recover them? They'll always be there. They will always be there. They're hard to find. They're hard to find, but they never go away. They never, they never, ever go away. So you'll have a hard time finding them, but they will always, always, always be around. Just like an arrow. An arrow never disappears at all. You can always go back and find your arrow later. It's just a matter of if you can find your arrow. Or if you can find your cartridge. Oh, there's two of them. It's always better it's always better to find them after you shoot the wolf if you can Get up here where they can't get to me Hello Hello boys Yeah go away now I'm t done with your shenanigans Mr. Wolfie boy. But yeah, you can always find them afterwards. It's just way easier to find them when you shoot the animal. Because a lot of it is like... A lot of it is like trying to... Uh, yeah, if it's a blizzard, yeah, you'll recover them. Yeah, you can go recover them after the blizzard. You just have to find the spot you shot them in. I've always find that they just, they're just harder to see. They're harder to see after the fact than before. So that that's that's the main thing is just good luck finding them because they will they will tend to just be hard to spot. We have long dark for another hour. Um, yeah, I'll probably do long dark for a little while longer. <laughs> that was my last cartridge, and I missed the wolf, so I run. I, you ran to hide. 
Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes tucking your tail between your legs and going the other direction is the best move you can make. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I've done that a couple times. But yes, you'll be able to go out and find the cartridge later on. Just like that wolf that ran away, I'll be able to go out and find his, uh, I'll be able to go out and find him later on with the arrows stuck in him. I think I lost another arrow, too. That's the one sucky thing about coming to Black Rock or Bleak Inlet. You tend to lose some arrows. Now, they net, they net, is you don't lose them in the sense that you'll never be able to get them back. You just lose them in the sense that you don't find them. You just, you just have a hard time finding them. Can, wolf, can arrows disappear if the wolf did not die until an aurora and transformed into an aurora wolf? Yes. Will intestinal parasites kill you if you don't take antibiotics? Yes. They, w they will kill you eventually if you don't take antibiotics. Because the intestinal parasites, they chunk away a point of health every day that you have it. So, so you lose health every single day that you do not that you have not taken the antibiotics. And so eventually they will whittle you down to nothing. And eventually, the biggest problem, the even bigger problem than that, Elcor, is that they also, they, 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 uh, intestinal parasites chunk away at your exhaustion bar. By day 20 or 30, you have, like, an exhaustion bar that starts here and goes to there. You have, like, very little exhaustion. So, you'll actually probably die of exhaustion before you die of actual losing health points. There's, there's my other arrow. Nice. Got my arrows back. I think. Oh, I have that one that's in the wolf somewhere. There's a wolf somewhere out there that has my arrow in him, the little bastard. Okay. Let's see how we've done. Okay, we're, we're not doing too bad. We got a few little dark spots there. We gotta come up across the bridge here. There's a cave over here. There's a cave over here. The exit is like over in this direction somewhere. Like right over here somewhere. I think that's the exit over there. And then we gotta come down across the river and map this up area over here. And then we gotta go back up over here and get this Polaroid map. I think I think we've actually picked up all the Polaroids. Yeah, we, we well, we picked up way more notes. But we picked up all the Polaroids in the game except or the two that are in zone of contamination. So there's more in zone of contamination than than there are in the in the thing. Uh, can I, and can I find more bullets if I come back to the big house? Uh, some kind of repop for bullets? No, you'll need to go elsewhere. Bullets only spawn into the game when you initially load up your file, and then the bullets are static for the rest of the game. Now you can find if you police your brass. You can find in cars, you can find batteries, and in a battery you can scrap with a with a hacksaw, you can scrap the battery into six pieces of lead, and out of those six pieces of lead, each piece of lead will give you six bullet tips. So you can get 36 bullet tips from one car battery. If you take that along with your brass, along with um um well, you have to take the lead with you because you can't do that. You have to be at the you have to be at the uh, forge or the the ammunition bench in either Bleak Inlet or Black Rock to make the lead into the bullet tips. But you also have to collect the dusting, uh, the the stump remover and the the uh, the dusting sulfur, and I think it's dusting sulfur. It's it's the, the fertilizer stuff. You got to collect both of those, and at the ammunition bench you can create gunpowder out of that. Or you can find gunpowder around the world as well. And you have to have the gunpowder, the bullet tips, and your brass at an ammunition bench. Um, and then you can make more bullets as well. Uh, well, yeah, you have to have, you have, to have uh, charcoal as well. Uh, but you can get, you can get charcoal, at, you know, pretty much anywhere. It, it's the dusting sulfur and the stump remover that you have to mainly worry about. But yeah, if you go to the uh, if you go to the uh, ammunition bench, you can make the cans of gun, can, the gun the cans of gunpowder with stump remover, dusting sulfur, charcoal, and you can make the bullets with the scrap lead, 
and then you can make the revolver cartridges and the rifle cartridges if you have the shell casings and the the gun the gunpowder and the bullets. And the gunpowder lasts. You can make 50 bullets out of one can of gunpowder. So one can of gunpowder and two pieces of lead will allow you to make 50 bullets. So. So it's it's not too bad. You only need two pieces of charcoal per uh, per can of gunpowder. So that's not that bad at all. Police your brass, baby. You gotta police the brass, Mike. Well, that's I mean, you know, I went I went hunting with my dad a couple times, and we always we always policed our brass. You got you gotta you gotta do that when you're a hunter as well. It's just it's just good conservation. My my dad was my dad was I looking back on it, I did not really realize how big of a conservationalist my dad was. Big time hunter, but he was a huge conservationalist. He did not allow us to throw trash away in the in the in the forest. He made us police all of our brass. He did not leave. You know, basically, it was a you 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 t you take nothing, and the only thing you leave behind is footprints. And that's that's what that's what my dad taught me. You know, is when you go into the forest, you take nothing. Well, unless you unless you actually you know harvest a harvest an animal out of the forest. But you take nothing and you leave behind footprints. You police everything. We had we had shovels that we would dig holes for waste, um, and uh, you know that was just that was just how we did it. You can use a bow. Yep, you can use a bow. My dad was not a bow hunter. He never did that. But another gen, how you doing? Hello, hello. How is it going today? How are you, another gen? It's always good to see you. I'm not sure I can carry this much longer. I'm not sure I I'm not sure I can do it. I'm not sure I can do it. <laughs> hey, I was trying to I was trying to get my thing. That guy who drank his own pee doesn't seem so crazy right now. He doesn't. He he seems a little crazy to me. Seems a little crazy to me, but go ahead and go give another Gen A follow, boys and girls. I was trying to give you a shout out there, and I was failing. <laughs> I was failing. I couldn't type. I couldn't type. Oh, I, you're you're here, Anora. Anora, you were gone for so long. I kind I kind of got used to trying to struggle through. <laughs> well, you know, you know, another Gen. They want. There's a there's a petition to rename Ash Canyon into Af Canyon. So I can see you getting confused there on it. Let's grab a piece of meat. Okay. We got those wolves kind of whittled, whittled down. I need to go find that arrow because that damn wolf stole my arrow. Little bastard. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, I, I call it Af Canyon when I go in there. It started as a joke and we just kind of ran with it. So I think somebody was like, they need to name something after you in game. And I'm like, nah. And they're like, well, we're just going to petition them to make it Af Canyon instead of Ash Canyon. Did my father serve in the military? Um, he, uh, he served in the, uh, he served in the Coast Guard. He didn't serve in the military proper, but he served in the Coast Guard for, for a few years. And got honorable discharge honor, honorably discharged from him. So it wasn't like it wasn't like uh, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine type thing, but So maybe that's where it Mike, that may be where he picked it up. I mean, I don't know how much I don't know how much policing their brass they do in the Coast Guard. I mean, you know, because he was he was on he was on this coast, which is mainly, you know, rest. It's not like it's not like it's not like being on the Coast Guard, probably down like, you know, Mexican border or something like that, trying to stop drug lords from bringing stuff in. 
But, um, you know, it's more re rescue type operations, I think he did, but. He never really talked about it a lot, let's put it that way. I'm not tired enough. Okay, I'm just gonna pass a little time. Get a little more light out there. We're gonna leave this place. We're gonna go and try to find our doggo. Coast Guard counts for me. Brave men and women crossing those bars and saving people. I grew up in the Great Lakes and Coasties were heroes to us. Oh yeah, gosh. Great Lakes area? Dang. Yeah, my my my, uh, my mom was actually born in Pennsylvania. There, she has family still in Erie, in Erie, Pennsylvania, right on the Great Lake. Yeah, and those those people. Oh, really? Well, hello, doggo. <laughs> thank th thank you. Th thank you. I pr I appreciate you taking down a deer for me and then just probably running away. That was very kind of you to do. But yeah, my uh, my uh, uh, my mom has family that lives back there in in Erie, and uh, yeah, Coast Guard was always really, really honored by them too because those guys are who you call when you're in trouble, and they come out in, in horrible condition. I mean, because honestly, let's be, let's be honest, when you're calling the course the Coast Guard, it's probably not a it's probably not a flat water kind of day, and the. <laughs> Probably not a flat water day for cry calling the Coast Guard needing help. More more often than not. I mean, I'm sure there's some there's some instances where it could be good weather and you just have like, you know, you got a boat fire or something that happened. But generally when you're calling ca call the Coast Guard and you're on a boat, um, the weather's probably not the nicest. And those guys are coming out in crappy weather. Breakfast delivered by Wolfie Eats, exactly. Okay, that's got to go there. That's got to go there. Pick up the feather. Okay, those are the guys down there. And this was that was a buck too, so that was a bigger deer altogether. Yeah, playing story mode really helps with the maps. I would also recommend Rick playing on lower difficulties. Um, if you play on the lower difficulties, um, you have a little more of a chance to learn the maps. Because honestly, Rick, I'll tell you right now, map knowledge in this game is what's going to save your butt. The, the map knowledge in this game is the most important thing because it will it will let you maneuver around the map and actually have an idea where you're going, even in blizzard or fog storm or stuff like that. Um, and on the lower difficulty levels, you have a better chance of being able to do that. Now, on the lower difficulty levels, you can find bows and arrows around the world. So you don't have to be as worried about making them. It's a, it's a good idea to... It's a good idea, I think, before you get to Interloper... To actually do practice forge runs on Stalker. Kind of learn the way over to the different forges. And figure out how you're going to get there. Uh, because Interloper is very unforgiving. Uh, I, I used to describe Interloper that for every m mistake you made in Interloper. You, you got an irreversible 1% closer to death. That, that you could never quite ever get back to... Uh, you know, uh, 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 you always, you'd always basic, basically interloper is small, small things that you do wrong, add up to bigger things going wrong in the future. And so that's always the way I used to look at it is that every time you make a mistake, that's another percentage closer to death that you are. And there was no real way of reversing that. You do enough mistakes and you're going to die eventually. I might have to drop some gear. 
Yeah, and Interloper doesn't have the stuff that other levels do either. There's half the clothes are gone, half the food is gone, uh, over half the, well, all the weapons are gone, half the tools are gone. Uh, well, not half the tools, maybe a third of the tools. You can't get knives or hatchets on Interloper. You can't get bows, you can't get arrows, you can't get guns. Uh, so there's like, there's like very few things in on Interloper that let you survive. You have to make most of your stuff. On Interloper, the fur clothing is the best clothing in the game. There is not better man-made clothing that you can that you can find. If, the, if there's a fur counterpart, it's the best you can get. I want to see if that wolf ran down here anywhere. So yeah, you know, you finish episode three, episode four in Black Rock is kind of more hard. Yeah, episode four in Black Rock is a little bit more difficult for sure. Oh, there's the there's the other one. Maybe there's a wolf up on the road. I think I already did something with that wolf though. But there's a wolf I think over here too. Yep, this, this wolf is a new corpse. Yeah, and, and that's one thing, too. Uh, yeah, Faceless makes a very good point. You can try a custom game and, and just turn on rifles and revolvers, and that can give you a pretty good chance to survive without facing the, uh, you know... Without having to worry about not being able to find weapons, that that can give you that can give you a pretty good, that can give you a little bit of a leg up that you wouldn't normally have, which is kind of nice. So yeah, we actually we're gonna be doing a endless night gun loper after we get all of the zones mapped on this run. We're gonna we're gonna start an endless night gun loper. My goal with this run was to get all the zones mapped and to get to 500 days minimum. And we were already at 500 days. So we are already at 500 days. Um, and getting to get all the zones mapped, this is our last major zone other than zone of contamination that we need to map. And so we, we've got almost all the zones mapped. And I have all but the last step of signal void done. And I need to get buried echoes done. So there's a few more steps we have to take, but we're very, very close. I might even, I might even after we after this session, I might even start a new interloper like next week, and do the endless night one. Start that next week, because I think I think we're only gonna. I think this week we'll probably finish up mapping this zone. I think this zone should be probably finished this week mapping wise. Which is kind of exciting. Interloper not for me now, I think. Yeah, yeah. you know, Interloper is... Uh... Interloper is definitely something you want to ease your way into down the road. Definitely easing your way into Interloper is a good idea. Uh, it makes you not want to quit the game as fast. <laughs> <laughs> it may it may it may it may it makes you it makes you uh makes you get excited for the next level i i would say rick that probably the best thing you can do is kind of play the difficulty level you're playing on right now play that till you get bored and then step it up a level because the way i look at it if you say like pilgrim which is the easiest difficulty level is so say story mode is level one the story mode has respawns. Story mode's a lot easier. It gives you a lot more stuff. Story mode is like level one. Pilgrim is going to level three. Stepping up to Voyager is going to like level six. Going to Stalker is like stepping up to like level 11. Going to Interloper is stepping up to level 20. So it's it, there's quite a big jump. Pilgrim and Voyager are pretty close together in difficulty level. It's just that Pilgrim has passive animals. 
uh, Voyager has aggressive wolves, bears, and moose. But stepping up between Voyager and Stalker is uh, is a little bit larger of a exp a little bit larger of a learning curve. And then going from Stalker to Interloper is a huge jump in learning curve. Because even in Stalker, they start you with a bedroll, they start you with matches, they start you with good cl with decent clothing. Um, you step up to Interlock Interloper, and you literally have a can and four pieces of clothing to start the game, and that's it. No bedroll, no matches, no tools, and nothing. You you got you basically have a can and the, and the clothes on your back, and they set you out into the world and go good luck. So, so it's, 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 de it's just the learning curve is huge between those difficulty levels. Low budget, just to send some good energy and need to make dinner. Low budget. Thank you for coming by, man. Uh, Rick, there's a, mo uh, there is a Mooseide Satchel in Hutch River Valley that is same as the backpack gives five kilos of carry weight. Yes. There's three ways to up your carry weight. One is by not starving yourself for 72 hours. Uh, you can get a well-fed bonus, which gives you five extra kilo weight and five extra five extra health. You can also get the moose side satchel if you kill a moose, or if you find a moose side satchel, that will give you five extra kilo weight, and that's what the moose side satchel looks like. And then if you go to Ash Canyon, you can go to the gold mine in Ash Canyon and get the upgrade for the regular backpack called the technical backpack, and that will give you five extra kilos. You can also make, if you have flour, you can craft the, you can craft the venison, rabbit, or ptarmigan pies, and those give you three extra kilos of carry weight, and those are very nice as well. So technically, you can get up to 48 kilos of carry weight. Now, the pies only last for three hours, but, you know, that's good. I mean, three hours is three hours, so... It gives you that little extra carry weight when you need it. Yeah, that wolf was really nice to kill that deer for us right in front of us. I'm not going to lie. That was super nice of him to do that. I'm sure he was a little bit annoyed that I stole his deer from him, but, you know, that's too bad. You shouldn't kill a deer right in front of me. And then run away like a little, like a little, like a little baby. Kill a deer and run away like a baby. He's a big baby. I'm going to drop some sticks here because we don't need all, we don't need 40 sticks. Pick up a couple. We've got, okay, I got, yeah, I got fuel. That's fine. We'll pick up more sticks as we go. Because that's what we do. That's how I roll. Probably should make a little water. I think I need some. Well, we got all of our arrows back, so that's good. That we shot in this area. I still have two arrows that I've lost that I've not found yet. I've got nine, I think nine arrowheads back at the dam. Gasbeard! Hey, buddy! How's it going? He heard a stick fall and he ran to fetch it. Yes, I have. Let's give the Gasbeard a shout-out! Thank you, Gasbeard, for coming by. How you doing, buddy? How's it going, man? I just drank unpotable water. You just drank unpotable water? What? Don't do that. That'll give you, that'll give you the runs. Everybody go over and give... Yes, beard follow though. He's a lovely, lovely streamer. Last plane's a medieval a dynasty. Has scurvy been a problem since I came to Blackrock? No. It has not been a problem since I came to Blackrock. I haven't let it be I haven't let it become a problem either, though. Now, I know there's a cave over here. I think it's right, I think it's right back in here. I think it's right back here where this birch is. Or is it not? No, it's not here. 
Okay. Let's map this up. Got some more birch here. But yeah, surprisingly, I've had a problem with it. But I have been eating a bunch of cattails. I have found a couple cans of, like, peaches as well. And I've scarfed those down. And peaches, peaches give you a lot of vitamin C recovery. So I haven't really had a big problem with that. So, as long as you don't wear an eye patch and say, Arr! Then scurvy cannot be a problem. Oh, I say R all the time. And the eye patch is definitely coming out at some point. Arr! How about if you say, I am 80? I figured I'd grab a little fur. Why the fur? Why the fur not? What fur? What's a good fur? It's good for nothing. Oh, we can make fur jokes all day long. Fur puns. The furry puns. You can only say that if blind on one side. Is that like getting blindsided? There's the cave I was looking for. Just for fun. Exactly. It's just for fun. The line workers hide out. Oh, there's a there's a bag here. That's cool. Come here, Cedar. Oh, look at the coal here. Oh, nice. I've been I've been short on coal. It was nice to see some coal again. Dang it, that erased those. Even though I can't see them, it still erased the... I hate... I, that's one thing I hate, is that if you harvest stuff in an area and then you remap, it gets rid of the stuff you harvested. That's, that's one... I, it basically... Whenever you map, it is a visual representation of what you exactly have on the map at that exact time. And it overwrites things that you had on the map before. It overwrites them with the new information. That's the only thing I hate about mapping. Is I like I'd like to be able to map and actually see the you know, see the stuff on the map that's there, like the rose hips and the and the mushrooms and stuff like that. It's very it's very frustrating. Bonus coal. We're going to go over to the left here first. There's an area right over here that we need to map that um, it, it, do it doesn't go through. It's like a dead end for right now. Maybe one day it'll go through to something. But it's just kind of a dead end at the moment. It's frustrating. Yes, it's very frustrating. Very, very frustrating, Gasbeard. Indeed. So what you been up to lately, Gasbeard? Have you been playing uh, any new stuff? Have you just been playing old stuff? I see you've been playing Medieval Dynasty. I'm going to be doing that on Saturday myself. I've been having a blast on the Oxbow map. That's been so much fun. Got a nice little village going. Like five or six years in. Have you been trying any new stuff, though, I guess? I've tried a few new things. We'll actually be playing some more Nightingale, too. Do the plants respawn? Rose hips, cattails, etc.? No, they do not. Cattails, rose hips, and um, mushrooms are a finite resource that only spawn once. Now, you can collect... You can collect mushrooms on beachcombing in Coastal Highway and Desolation Point. You can get mushrooms that wash up. Um, but uh, that's it. Been dabbling in Satisfactory. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. You've also been doing videos for Witcher 3 and Skyrim. 
Yes, and I, I've seen your comments on Witcher 3 as well. Unfortunately, Gazbeard, you're leaving comments on videos that are about 70 episodes behind where I am right now. <laughs> but maybe, you know, I may pay, I may play that again. I may play it again sometime. And and maybe those comments will help me on my second playthrough. I'm actually up to the point where I have fought against the uh I I've I've actually reached where you fight the where you do the final like big battle with the uh not the final battle but you do the big battle with the the wild hunt the second one after you do the battle at Kaer Morhen I broke broke out my old XPS to play Mech Warrior, my my old time fave. Nice. All right. Oh, that's nice. That cleared up that area there. That's beautiful. I like it. So the batteries you find under the hoods like that. The one on the ships at Skellige is a tough battle. I actually... I I really enjoyed that one. I I think, Gazbeard, I think one of the things is I am level 37. And um, so I think I might have been a little over... I, I, had, I, I think I might have been a little over... Powered for it. Not maybe overpowered, but... I think I had leveled up enough that it wasn't as hard as it could have been. If you know what I'm saying. I found it to be a hard battle, though. I mean, it was a long battle. But it was a lot of fun. I had a good time with it. The Battle of Kaer Morhen, I just kind of, like, did. And I didn't know how that was going to work out. But it actually worked out okay. Hello, stick. I saw that stick all the, all the way there, and I had to go pick it up. <laughs> See, I actually, I actually have quested. I'm doing the Griffin, the Griffin quest, the Griffin gear quest, and that's been. I found, I found, I found. I've been able to lev level the Griffin gear up pretty good. I don't have, I don't have the set where, I think, I think there's like the Grandmaster set that like has all the bonuses. I don't have that yet. But I, I found that the Griffin set is pretty pretty good for what I'm doing, especially since I'm going all you know I'm going I'm going big spell build with Ard and Igni and all those. So there's some guys though that you do the you do the you do the uh, um, you do the shield on. I think that's Ard. I think you do that. And they just smash right through it. They're like, yeah, never, don't, don't even think about it, bud. Don't even think about it. I'm so tired. And I'm like, aww, but I wanted to ard. Because it's so ard. The game's so ard. Well, Will seems very excited to be deathly exhausted, overweight, and still mapping. Oh, he does. He's very excited. He loves he loves to be overweight and still mapping. That's his favorite, that's his favorite thing. I know there's a cave up over here. I think it's back this way. I think. It's getting dark, so it's hard to see where it is. See a stick, pick it up. It'll bring you five years good luck. Or maybe five days good luck in this game. Maybe five minutes good luck. Okay, yeah, we're heading the right. We're heading the right way. Always look for these broken things. That sort of tells you you're going the right right direction. Pro 
part part of the blood and wine DLC. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh, I haven't even I haven't even uh, secured the patterns for the Grandmaster stuff. I just I and I'm not doing blood and wine until I I, I was I was I was I think I don't know if it was you Gazbeard or somebody was like, don't do blood and wine until you finish the game. Uh, do maybe some of the Hearts of Stone stuff, but blood and wine is sort of something you want to wait to do until you've actually finished the game. If you've already harvested the cattails, rose hips, what's the benefit of having a map that shows you where they used to be? Well, it was it was more it's more just to have them on the map, Ari. That way, because this this guy is gonna be this guy, if he lives, this guy will be always the character that if somebody has a map question, I can go pull up I can switch over to this guy, pull up the map, and be like, hey, look, you can go here and get this. Or you can go over here and this is there. That sort of thing. That was sort of the idea of it. I can make a prepper's pie, prepper's pie, prepper's pie. So it kind of sucks that they all disappear once I harvest them if I map again. If I map again, they'll all disappear. It says you should really finish series storyline. And the DLCs before oh the secondary quests and the DLCs before finishing series storyline. Really? Well, I'm just pushing forward with what we got. I'm probably not I'm probably not gonna do uh, blood and wine until I finish the entire thing. Ah. Uh. I wonder if Hinderland will give uh, will get uh, will give Will and Aster anything new to complain about. Oh yes, they always will. They always will. They can always give them new stuff to complain about. Why not? That's half the fun is hearing them complain about stuff. I'm actually I should probably drop any meat I have out here where it's cold, just so it doesn't just so it doesn't rot as fast. There we go. Bye bye meats. Stinky meat smells worse than good meat. So you don't want you don't want your meat to be stinky when you're carrying it around. Let's put it that way. You don't want the stinky meat on you when you're carrying it around with you. Final battle in Blood and Wine is a really tough one. I had to abandon it. And roll back to save before it started to go back to Velen to level up more. Well, is, isn't isn't blood and wine? What 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 level would you say blood and wine is at, uh, Gasbeard? Is, isn't it like it's it's pretty high, like in the fifties or something like that? High forties or fifties? Or mid 40s, something like that. Ah, there we go. I was gonna say, don't tell me it's a blizzard out here. Did I really uh, say I uh, see 506 of survival? Yes, we are at day 506. We've actually survived. We we broke the 500 threshold today. We've actually survived 506 days. We are on day 508. So we actually broke that 500. We broke the 500 day uh, 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 today. So that was pre that's pretty cool. I'm very happy about that. I always thought there was a wolf over here, but maybe I'm wrong. Level 60 with all level 60 gear. Okay. Okay. So it's even higher than I was thinking. It was even higher than I'm thinking. See, I'm, I'm only at level 37 right now. So there's no way I can do it. No way.
I do find that the uh, the sign build is really strong. <clears throat> and I did, I did, oh, Gazbeard, I did figure out that that extra carry weight doesn't come until I assign it. I hate that you only get 12, that you only get 12 slots to assign stuff to. That's kind of freaking annoying. <laughs> it's like, why take, what you know, I guess it's like, why take the, why take all those skills when you can only assign 12 of them anyway? It's like, okay, I can only assign 12 skills anyhow. I guess you do it because situational, maybe, or something? Now, right down there is where we killed the bears, right down there. The intro on minor quests. <laughs> it can be down at 30, 40 ish level, but the final fights need level 60. Okay. I wish that when you level up, they'd give you more slots to put your uh, abilities in. There is a way to assign an extra four slots. Can't remember, but you'd have to look. You'd have to look it up. I just think once you hit like like every 10 levels I, I think like it should only have three slots to begin with and then every 10 levels you get another three slots but I got you know but whatever I get it it is what it is I'm sure there's a reason for their madness there's a reason for the stuff to happen that way I got that little post uh, post game convention cough, you know, where the air conditioner. And it's not that I'm sick; it's that the air conditioner just dries me out. It's all, it's always that air conditioner in that room that just dries me out like crazy. longest time I thought skills in the same column of the same on the same column were cumulative not alternatives I thought I did too I'm right there with you I thought I thought that once you leveled it up it was like oh now I get all the stuff from the first one and now I get to start working on the second one it's like no 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 you get the stuff from the first one if you equip it and then you get the stuff from the second one if you equipped it so it's like okay so now I have to equip all the art spells I've got to equip I got you know it's like oh okay I guess. Really? It's kind of annoying in a way, but whatever. It's all good. It's all fun. We're heading back over to the trailer over here. We're heading back to this little trailer right here. We're down here. We came up this way and across that little jump there, and then we're coming back over to the trailer here. <clears throat> well, see, for the longest time, Gazbeard, I thought that the skills, the brown skills, the, the ones that you mentioned in your last comment, I thought that those just were skills you acquired if you took them. I didn't think you had to equip those. I thought you just got those. I thought you basically got them, and 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 uh, you know you 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 decide you take it and you would just get that skill i didn't think you had to assign that to your skill tree so i was very i was very disgruntled once i had taken some of those i'm like oh i'll take the weight carry one and for the longest time i was i was like i thought i was getting the weight carry one but i wasn't <clears throat> just recently did i actually figure it out that i had to put those into a skill slot to actually get it which made me a little sad but you know I'm a sad boy. That's what I get. 
I get to be sad boy for a while. Boo. Yes, we have lots of bear meat here. <laughs> Gerald has Alzheimer's. He forgets one skill if he equips another. Yes, he does. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I don't remember how to do that skill anymore. That that, sk that skill's gone. That skill doesn't That skill doesn't have any, any reason for being any longer. Longer question. What part of Signal Void do you have to finish? Back to Forsaken Airfield? Yes, that's the only one I have to finish. So, yeah, I just have to use the Forsaken, uh, the transmitter network to search Forsaken Airfield for the signs of the bunker. And, and I mean, I know where the bunker is, so I'm just going to head to it. Because the bunker in Forsaken Airfield is right up here by Justy's Hobble. It's just like right over in this area. Um, so I, I just have to come back into Forsaken Airfield. Um, I could actually probably come back around, but I'll, pr I'll probably go this way because I want to map this up. I want to get... This mapped up and get this. There's a little secret passage here I want to get mapped up as well. So I want to map that back up and then we'll come over the airfield. We'll come up to Justy's Hovel and we'll complete that there. So that's that's what I that's what I want to get done. That's what I want to get done. But for today, boys and girls, we're going to wrap it up here for Long Dark. We've been doing Long Dark for four hours today. We usually only do it for three. But since I've been gone for the last week... Uh, we're doing it for four today, which is fun. Uh, we will return with Long Dark on Thursday morning uh, before we play some State of Decay 2. Bing, bada, boom. Um, and then today, what we're going to do is we're going to actually deviate a little ooh, a little bit from the schedule. I'm going to take a little short break, but we're going to deviate a little bit from the schedule. We're going to play a little bit of... Nightingale, but we're also we're gonna also play a little bit of Stellaris as well. So we're gonna hit up both Nightingale and Stellaris today for a couple hours each. Um, so we so we did four hours of Long Dark. We're gonna do a couple hours of uh, Stellaris or of Nightingale and a couple more hours of Stellaris tonight, so we can get all the games in that we usually play. Um, although we did because we we didn't stream yesterday as well. So when I get back, I'm gonna take a short little break. Uh, when we get back, we're going to be starting with some Nightingale, uh, which you ha if you haven't seen it, hang around. It'd be fun to have you here for it. Uh, YouTube, we're going to ditch out and we'll be back in, a, in like five minutes when I, after I get my break done. Um, so thank you everybody on YouTube for coming by and watching. I hope to see you all again. Uh, maybe come back for some Nightingale and Stellaris here in a minute. Uh, but those here on Twitch will be keeping on going. Bye. Bye YouTube. All right. <laughs>